What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to part two of this Phyrexia All Will Be One set review. I'm Frank, and this is Frank 2. And uh, we're going to be doing the red cards, the green cards, the gold cards. And the schmold the, card. And the schmold, and the schmoldy mold cards today, which are artifacts, you know. So, mm. <clears throat> so black was clear, the clear winner yesterday, right? Like, not even close, I don't think. I, you know what? I, there's going to be a challenge. I'm going to see how well I can perform on the ladder with literally a just black cards. one only black mono black deck. What do you mean one only? Like a like a Highlander deck? No, from this just, set. I'm saying like only cards from this set. Oh, so like a like a a block deck, but with just one set. Yeah, and then Got and it. then go run it on the ladder. I think that'd be fun. That's a fun experiment because I think the cards are good. I don't know if there's yeah. enough for a whole deck though. I mean, there was at we'll least 20. Out. We named 20 cards like nothing. <laughs> it's out of 39. It's like, no, oh, no, no, no. I mean, like four of Like five cards were automatically. Oh, yeah. Four. I see. Oh, yeah. That's a good point. Yeah, that's interesting. Okay. Well, all will be one is the first red card. It is a five mana enchantment. When you put one or more counters on a permanent or player, all will be one. It deals that much to target. That much damage. <clears throat> To target opponent, a creature an opponent controls, or planeswalker an opponent controls. Seems like your normal red mythic enchantment. I would. It's okay. <clears throat> yeah, I'm not a big enough commander player to care about this. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, that's where I sit, where I'm like, this is a lot of work, and unless I'm putting 98 other cards with this to, like, build around it, I feel like it's not going to do anything. Nope. I mean, because, like, how, how many constructed, good constructed decks are going to have that many focused ways to put counters on stuff, you know? It feels unlikely. And then here's the other thing, too. Another thing about it. It says whenever whenever you put one or more counters, deals that much damage. So if, like, if I'm proliferating mm -hmm. and I proliferate one, this five mana enchantment does one damage. Right. But on the other hand, if you, like, put one counter on three different things, it deals three, which is pretty pretty good. Do you... Do you put counters on planeswalkers when they enter? Is that why they double? I for... believe so, yes. Hmm. Which might make right. this different. Like, if you can play this on five and then, like, a planeswalker on six, it just automatically deals, like, four to six damage, depending on loyalty. Yeah. It's not terrible. It's bad. It's not great, but it's like, I'm, I'm trying to see the applications for it, because otherwise we're not giving it a fair shake, you know? Yeah. Okay. Awaken the Sleeper. Four mana <clears throat> for a sorcery. Gain control of target creature until end of turn. Untap that creature. It gains haste until the end of turn. If it's equipped, you may destroy all equipment attached to that creature. See, I mean, <clears throat> every set's going to have their threat and effect, and this is just this one's where you destroy the equipment, which is which is fine. That's, like, that's actually a pretty interesting caveat. I, I don't think it's going to be relevant nope. that often. Nah. But, you know, I mean... It's like, again, it's a necessary evil. With your draw two, lose two black cards. Your counter spell for three mana in blue that does a, a, a mediocre effect. Like, Axiom Engraver. Two mana for a one three. It enters the battlefield with two oil counters on it. Remove an oil counter. Discard a card. Draw a card. So this guy's just rummaging. Twice. Two, two rummages. Do you remember when you could just rummage because the creature existed? And now you have to, like, have oil counters. And you gotta you only get to rummage twice. Hashtag it's two rummages. Like we, we talk about power creep, and it's like the the mechanics that are like busted just get pushed, and then it's like, well, we need to dial it back on rummage. <laughs> you can't be rummaging more than twice, buddy. Otherwise, you're just gonna you're just gonna break the game. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't know. Wasn't there like there was like that one because there was that one one in like a core set for like three mana, and then you just tap it to rummage, and it was like, okay, well, that's that's fine. There's always been a couple of those, yeah. Yeah, it's just weird to see it like so limited now where it's like, okay, you get two and that's it. This is barely even limited worthy. I'd still play it. I know you would. You wouldn't play red. Do you have headphones? Because I can kind of hear myself coming out of your speakers. It's not a ton, what but... What about now? Uh, I, I don't... Mm, I'm trying to talk so I can hear it. A little bit. A little bit. Can, it, can you guys hear that in the in the chat? 
at Wick. <laughs> As we wait. Barbed batter fist. Two mana for an equipment. Uh makes a two two when it comes into play. Uh makes a three three when it comes into play. Interesting. No, it makes a three one. Oh, plus one, negative one. You're right. Okay. Uh equipped equipped for one. Yeah, that's I mean what are you gonna do? That's not terrible. I don't hate it. It's not great. Eh, I mean it's not it's, it's not the best. Yeah. It's it, yeah, it's a common equipment for a limited set. Like, what are you gonna do? It's you're not gonna put this in your commander decks, you're not gonna put this in your, your constructed decks. You're gonna put it in the garbage. In the garbage. Blade Graft Aspirant. Three mana for a two three menace equipment spells you cast cost one less to cast. Uh okay. Activated abilities of equipment you control that target blade graph aspirant cost one less to cast to activate. I thought this would be uncommon, actually. Making all your equipment cost one less is not terrible. I mean, it's a 2 3 for, for 3, though, right? So it's a. The creature is not s super great rate. Um, It's got Menace, too. I mean, it's a great card for Limited. I, I think I, you'd play this in Limited even if you have no equipment because it's just a 2 3 Menace. Being but, able to equip cheap equipments for nothing, like the last one we just saw, you could equip for zero and then move yeah, it. Yeah, that's and true. Then move it. It's nice. That's true. I mean, it's not. Yeah. I mean, again, like this is gonna make a, a sweet limited deck. I would definitely draft some equipment in this guy and and feel good about it. So, but I, I yeah, I don't think for this rate you're gonna you're gonna see any constructed plays. So, yep. Blazing crescendo, two mana. Target creature gets plus three plus one until end of turn. <coughs> Exile the top card of your library until the end of turn. That you may play that card. Kind of cool, actually. I mean, right? I, I, it replaces itself. I do like the until the end of your next turn. Um, it's a lot more lenient than until the end of this turn. Like we were right. playing Ab you Abbot of you it defensively. Uh, well, you just get you just get an extra turn to play the card. You know what I mean? Until the end oh. of your next turn. You know what I mean? So, oh. like, if I use it on my turn and then I have no I, mana I left, I have until the end turn. of my next turn to play the card. Like this makes I, it even better. I, yeah, I like when I was playing Abbot of Carol Keep in Cube, and I was like, you know, this card would be so good. Like, I think this would be a tier one card if you had until the end of your next turn <clears throat> to play the card. Because like you, know me. you always play Abbot of Carol Keep on like three when you have on turn three, when you have two mana and you play him and you hope to hit a land. And if you don't hit a land, you just don't get to play your card. You know what I mean? So like having until the end of the next turn is just it's it's basically just draw a card. You yeah, know, which is, I mean, obviously that'd be a lot better. But again, you could hit like a four drop on turn two and then still not play it on turn three. So you, there is a chance to whiff. But like red having the ability to like postpone that card until the next turn, like it's still good because it gives you that tension where like you still have to play that specific card or you just lose it. So yep. maybe that's not what you want to do, you know? Like it's much different than drawing a card. Cool effect. I, I do like that. I, I like the tacking on like until the end of your next turn, you have to play it or you get to play it. So cacophony scamp one red for a Phyrexian goblin warrior. Whenever cacophony scamp deals combat damage to a player, you may sacrifice it. If you do proliferate when cacophony scamp dies, it deals damage equal to its power to any target. So people have been posting about this one, obviously putting it in um, like a pioneer version of hammer time. Uh, Cause it's just a one shot. Oh, that is interesting. You just equip the hammer and sacrifice it. That's yep. that's it. It's a built-in. It's got a built-in fling. Yep. It does have to deal damage though. Right, but I mean, you still you equip it with it, the, and then you attack, and then if you don't, if they chump block, right, you just. Do I guess it again if next they, turn. yeah, I guess if they, I guess they have to actually get rid of it, and if they do, then they take ten. Then they're taking ten no matter what, right? Unless that's it's interesting. Again. What a little scam. A little scam. Um, it's. It's funny to me because like the amount of reminder text after proliferate almost made me miss that second ability because I was like, oh, that's just all reminder text. Yeah. I think it'll see play. <laughs> um, I don't know about standard, but definitely a pioneer. Yeah, I mean it's it's very interesting ability. Like having a card car that when it dies, it deals you damage equal to its power is uh it's always kind of strong, right? 
like there's always like, well, how can I make it a lot more powerful? <clears throat> Capricious Hellraiser, six mana for a four, four Phyrexian dragon costs three less to cast. If you have nine or more cards in your graveyard. Okay. So it's three mana. If you have nine cards in your graveyard, nine is such a weird number. Yeah. Like it's, it's not threshold, but it's like two more than threshold and it's not counting instants or sorceries, just for any cards. That's really, yep. it feels really arbitrary. Uh, when Capricious Hellraiser enters the battlefield, exile three cards at random from your graveyard. Choose a non-creature, non-land card from among them and copy it. You may cast the copy without paying its mana cost. I mean, definitely a potentially busted ability, right? You're casting anything from your graveyard, well, well a non, non-creature, non-land without paying its mana cost. So the thing is like, I, yeah, the nine makes more sense now because it's obviously just a way to have it, um, hit 33% of your graveyard, right? You like, that's, that's your, you're, you're hitting one third of your spells and you get one third of those spells. So it's like, you just keep going down. Like the, the thing is like, it's really hard to hit the exact spell you want. Like if you have a cruel tomato and an opt in your graveyard, like that is a sizable margin for, for like what you're going to hit. And... You might not hit I gotta, either. I got to see how this, I, I don't know. I, I don't see it, even though it definitely could be a powerful effect, but I can't see an easy route to filling your graveyard quickly with cards that you want cast versus like an opt, right? It'd be easy to say, I'm going to get nine cards in my graveyard with uh thought scour opt fetch lands. But then again, you're not exiling. So three, non-creature non-land cards you're actually exiling three random so you could exile right, land exactly and creature yeah so but like okay as a as let's let's that aside how how good is this as a four four flyer for for three red well if that's obviously busto right right so that's good right so like even outside of the ability if the ability doesn't if it doesn't proc as we say like what's like is this still good on rate i get you know i go opt consider uh, fetch land, fetch land. You know, I'm filling my graveyard. I have nine cards in there, and I play Capricious Hellkite like for three mana as a four four. Like that's still pretty good, right? Very good. So, so a turn cycle of one mana cantrip, fetch fetch land, one mana cantrip, fetch land, thought scour, and then just oh, a fetch land in, on on turn three. That's seven cards already. Yeah, and you probably hit an arc an arc light phoenix too, so that's good. <laughs> yeah. Which, hey, that's relevant, actually, that you said that because you cast the copy. So then it will, it'll trigger, trigger your arc lights also. But you may exile your arc light. <laughs> that's what I was thinking, right? I was like afraid of like, oh. okay, yeah, then, you, then the guy's, then he's dead. My bad. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, it's, it definitely seems fine, though. I'm going to see what this guy's going for. It's worth, this guy's worth like, wow. So this guy, the normal version is like $7. And then there's like, the two foil like alternate arts are like forty five and fifty nine dollars. So this is definitely a, a chase rare. It looks like, which makes think? sense. Like some of the most competitive players in Magic are the ones that play these like uh, reduced costs red flyers, right? Like the Arclight Phoenixes, the Crackling Drakes, things like that. So yeah, this is this this feels like it slots into a tier one deck very very easily. Yep. Also, blinking it is interesting. You could blink it because it just says when it enters the battlefield, exile yep, three cards at random. So, yep. like, yeah, if you have something really expensive in your graveyard, like a magma, you could cycle magma, what's it called? You know the one, eight mana. The one that makes a treasure when you when you cycle it. And I'm saying cycle loosely. Oh, it's not magma. Mag, it's mag, oh, magma, magma. Opus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not magma. It's magma opus. Yeah, you're right. It's it's, it's That's what I said, right. Okay. Ch Chimney Rabble, four mana for a 3-3 three, three haste. When it enters the battlefield, create a 1-1 one, one red Phyrexian Goblin. So this is 4-4 four, four for four, essentially, with haste. This is good for a limited, for sure. Yeah, that's about it. Adding Phyrexia to all these type lines is, like, really... It's it's really uh, stretching them thin. Like, look how long yeah. it is. <laughs> it's, it's, flirt it's flirting with the symbol. Yeah, you're, like, getting real close. Churning Reservoir, one red for an artifact. At the beginning of your upkeep, put an oil counter on another target non-token artifact or creature you control. Two and a tap. Create a 1-1 one, one red Phyrexian Goblin token. 
Activate only if an oil counter was removed from a permanent you control this turn, or a permanent with an oil counter on it was put into a graveyard this turn. It's trash. That just seems like that's so. That seems like it's so hard to like. Make a one one. Neon Tokyo, thank you so much for the for the gifted subs, buddy. Really appreciate it. I clearly have no, I have no notifications whatsoever based on Twitch. I don't know why. Um, I don't know how to fix that. But oh, let's see if I I refresh the cache of the curb page. Let's see if that does anything. You refreshing your cache? Yeah, bro. You always got to refresh that cash. Yeah, I, like this just feels like so much work just to get a one one, and you're still paying two mana. Like if this was no, if this was a a, a a triggered ability rather than an activated ability. Like, hey, every time you remove a permanent, uh, an oil counter from a permanent, you get a one one. Or every sweet. time a permanent with an oil counter dies, you get a one one. I don't think that's happening frequently enough that it would be it would be overpowered. It would be overpowered at all. Making a one one. Like you're probably losing one oil counter a turn at most in most limited games. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think that would always push it to like a constructed worthy card where I could I could build around this. But right now it's like at, at two mana and an activate, I'm never gonna build around this because it's just too expensive to make a one one. Yep. Like maybe you've heard of a bitter blossom. Is that you know? If not. It's not my fault. I've heard of the Might Hive though. Dragon Wing Goliath. <laughs> Same. Oh, Dragon Wing Glider. That's a little throwback to yesterday because that's when we talked about Might Hive. Uh, five mana for a four Mirrodin equipment. So you're getting a 2-2. Two, two. Equipped creature gets plus two, plus two, and flying and haste. This is actually kind of sweet. Um, it's basically a 4-4 four, four, quote-unquote dragon with flying yep. and haste. And then if it dies... You just get to put this on, put this on something else, and that gets haste and flying. the The, the only problem is that five mana is a lot to yeah. equip, so yeah. like it's it's hard to put this on something else and take advantage of the haste. But putting this on someone else to take advantage of the flying and the plus two plus two seems just fine. If there's a if there's a red deck, <clears throat> this is like one of those cards they put in the sideboard to make it quote unquote go bigger. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, typically 4-4 four, four flying creatures with haste are usually good in formats. Um, Glorybringer, uh, Stormbreak, uh, Stormbreath Dragon, like cards like that. Like you're you're, yeah. you're typically going to play the 4-4 four, four flyer with haste in a format. And I think this is good enough to fill that role as well. Like just leaving the equipment behind seems really good. Because, like, in right. the late game, like, if, if you have a stalled board and you have, like, a 2-2, two -two, you equip this, and now all of a sudden it's attacking in the air as a 4-4, four -four and, I mean, yep. it just makes your crappy guys really decent in the late game. I don't know. I, I think this seems decent. Seems decent. Yeah, I think the equipment, the equip cost could be lower. I, I do agree with that. But... I don't know. I, I I don't think it's bad. Like on as it's fa as a face card, just as a four four flying haste for five. Like I think that's totally fine. Yep. But we'll see. Exuberant fusling. O one for a one mana zero one. Trample. It gets plus one plus O for each oil counter on it. When it enters the battlefield, and whenever another creature or artifact you control is put into a graveyard, put an oil counter on it. So. <clears throat> Apparently, red has a theme of, like, creatures, when they die, things happen. Yeah, I guess. Like, it seems like things are getting oil counters when creatures die, or things are triggering when creatures die for red. Um, this could be good, right? But at the end of the day, it's an X1, always? It's going to be, a, yeah, it's a 1-1 one, one, one for 1 when it comes into play. But then if any other creature or artifact dies, it gets another oil counter, so it's 2-1, then a 3-1. You just have to have so many things die for this to be any relevant size. Like, for this to be a good rate, like, two, two, one thing has to die, and probably a second thing has to die. At minimum, I, I, I think three one's not even great. I think a three one trample for one is, is good. I think that's a great rate, and you'd always play that. No, but, it's not because if it was a if it was a static three one that I could play on turn one, yeah. Oh but yeah, of course. I see what you're saying. I, but if I if in a limited if in a limited game on turn three I dropped a three a one mana three one, I wouldn't care. 
That's that's fair. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah. I could see that. Yeah. Forge Hammer Centurion. Three mana for a 3-2. Whenever another creature artifact you control is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, <clears throat> put an oil counter on Forge Hammer Centurion. So again, when something dies, this guy gets an oil counter. Whenever it attacks, you may remove two oil counters from it. When you do, target creature can't block this turn. Again, that just feels like so much work. Like, so two things have to die for me to make one creature unable to block. Like that—that's just so much work. Am I crazy? Like, I, am I crazy? No, that that's irrelevant. Like these these cards. Like I can't remember. Was it Goblin Shortcutter? Goblin something Cutter? Where it had dash? You were paying three for a three two that immediately did you know could stop something from blocking this is are you good. you're talking about uh, there's also on crop crasher from Amonkhet. like yeah, whenever yeah. It, it attacked you could exert him and then yep. um you know they then the you know creature couldn't block like ha like having to lose two creatures two creatures or artifacts have died for you to do this like how many like how many creatures do you have left I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying this is a terrible card, but it's just a lot of work. I'm I'm talking to chat here, but it, it it seems you're right. It's a balanced, limited card. That that's is what it is. Yep. Target creature can't block. That. Yeah, I don't know. I'm trying to like. I I feel like I'm missing something. F f free from flesh, one red for an instant. Target creature gets plus two, plus two. Put two oil counters on it. Okay, see now, see now we're getting somewhere, right? Because <laughs> this is like having an efficient way to put oil counters on things kind of brings these strategies together. So now that I've seen this, I feel a little better about it. Okay, and also the exuberant fusling, right? Uh, plus one, plus O for each oil counter on it. So exuberant fusling plus free from flesh for two mana. A five three. You get a permanent three one that becomes a five three for a turn with trample pretty good yeah so i mean like now so see there we go now <laughs> now i'm feeling it like this just turned it around for me i think this is this is very good yeah and plus this this being one mana is awesome like i think two mana is is, is so, so much worse for this card one mana yeah. makes this immensely playable like because there's a lot it's, yeah the oil counterparts kind of even can be irrelevant like getting plus two plus two allows you to trade up a lot in yeah. um in limited and it, we've seen like three or four oil cards, cards that with oil, oil matters, right? Yep. Yeah. Furnace Punisher, three mana for a three. See, now I can look, I feel like I can look at every other card through a different light now. Uh, <clears throat> three mana for a three, three Frexian Warrior with Menace. At the beginning of each player's upkeep, Furnace Punisher deals two damage to that player unless they control two or more basic lands. Okay, so this is a three, three for three with Menace in Limited. But this is an interesting never... constructed card. I've never seen this card before, and I really like this card. Two damage, unless they control two or more basics. There's so many. There are so many decks that won't have two or more basics. Especially, especially in standard right now with all the three color decks, and yeah, now we're getting more this fast card's land. Cool. Which means, yeah, this feels like Anathamancer, um, and it also feels like uh, Rampaging Ferocidon, and it feels like Eidolon. Like it has that kind of like. I'm going to damage you for, for like either doing kind of normal things or playing outside of, of conventions. Someone said, I had no idea if furnace punishing was a thing. I've never punished my furnace. Well, <laughs> you ain't lived buddy. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. This card seems, this card seems great. This is good. I like and it. A three, three, three minutes for three is, is not nothing. What is, what is rampaging for Austin on? What's, what is that guy's stats? It's a three three menace for three. Oh wow, that, interesting. Uh, you lose the life whenever any. Yeah, no, I, I yeah, I know the rest. I was just because about three three for three threes for three with menace. Like, like that was that's just that's funny to me. Can you tell me the stats on a Lanowar Elf? Uh, it's one two and it has death touch. I think. Okay, nailed it. Yeah, thank you. I, I, this is my first Magic Rodeo, bro. <laughs> I've been playing since nineteen ninety seven. Furnace Strider, five mana for a four five. It enters the battlefield with two oil counters on it. Remove an oil counter. Target creature gains haste until end of turn. That's pretty good. good limited two, card. Two haste shots is not nothing. On a on a decent body. Four five for five. I like it. I I also like it. I, I'm having a good time with it. Gleeful Demolition. Right, of course. Yep. Gleeful Demolition. One mana. 
destroy target artifact. I like it already. That's a good rate. It's a sorcery, yep. but it's a good rate. If you controlled that artifact, create three one on Phyrexian goblin creature tokens. Oh, interesting. It's like Koldatha. Someone... Yeah, Koldatha Rebirth, at his initial cost, second artifact, put three one one goblin tokens on the battlefield. So it's this better, is a, right? This is a better Koldatha Rebirth because um you can target their artifacts if you don't want to if you it's it's just an artifact removal spell that has the upside of doing the same thing as called author rebirth i like it cool card yeah this card's sweet this is just called author rebirth upgraded yep hazardous blast four mana it deals one damage to each creature your opponent's control and they can't block we've seen this this is like rapid flame right it just yep. deals one damage to all their guys and they can't block this turn It'll win you. It's gonna win. It's gonna win a lot oh, of yeah. limited games. Oh yeah, you're gonna lose to this card at least once in limited. A day. <laughs> a day. <laughs> Hex gold halberd. Two mana, four Mirrodin, So it's a two-two. As long as it's your turn, equip creature has first strike and trample. I mean, it's a two-two first strike trample for two mana. That's totally fine on rate. It's solid limited. I think this is a very. This is probably the best equipment I think I can remember. That we've seen so far. I, I can't remember. Too I many do others like the plus two, plus two flying haste better. That's but five it, mana. It's also a rare. Sure. Well, it's an equipment though. We're talking about equipment. We just talking about equipment. Jesus. We ain't even, what are we even talking about here? We're talking about equipment. You know what I'm it's saying? Good. Oh, chat's not on the screen either, man. What is going on? That's so sad. Damn I feel it, like chat. It's not their, it's not their fault. Don't blame them. You know, sorry, chat. Why is why is it gone? I don't remember. Oh snap! What? What are you thinking? I peeked ahead and I like the next card. Oh come on! Don't be a cheater. Sorry. Hex Sorry. gold slash one red for an instant. It deals two damage to target creature. If that creature has toxic, it deals four damage to that creature instead. See, this seems Think fine, but it's not cool. going to withstand the test the test of time like unholy unholy heat. Or no, you know, God, no. You know what I mean? Because like the the problem is that it's a set specific, it's a set specific removal spell. Like once we get to the next set or the set after that, like you're not going to see toxic creatures anymore. Fine, it sucks. No, it doesn't suck. It's great for. Is this even a constructed card though? Like, is there going to be enough toxic creatures in standard to like to justify this? I just looked at it as if there's a deck with toxic and standard, I like the thought of being able to play this in a red deck on the sideboard. It's a one mana great interaction spell for that deck, that matchup. That's I thought it was cool. Okay. I mean that's fine. You can do that. You can you can think it's cool. Rob is toxic. It's true. I wanna just see if I can get the stupid chat to work. I don't think I can. I'm gonna be honest with you. What is interact? What I don't know what this button does. It doesn't do anything, I guess. Filter? No. Refresh? Can I refresh it? I did that already, I think. All right, that's Galvanic cool. Blast goes to face, doesn't it? Galvanic Blast it's, does go to face, yes. It's definitely a worse Galvanic Blast. Way right. worse. Koth, Fire of Resistance. God, there's so much text on here. Four mana for a four loyalty planeswalker. Plus two, search your library for a basic mountain card, reveal it, put it in your hand, then shuffle. Negative three. Koth, um, you know what? I never, can I, can I tell you the, my least favorite word in Magic the Gathering? Basic in front of a, a land type. Okay. I don't mind searching for a plains. I don't mind searching for an island. I just wish with the amount of variety in Magic, you could search for a stomping ground or a steam vents. You know what I mean? Like, I, I don't know. I mean, that would make it so much better because this card's trash. Negative three. Koth, Fire of Resistance, deals damage to target creature equal to the number of mountains you control. So, typical Koth. Uh, negative seven. You get an emblem with whenever a mountain enters the battlefield under your control, the emblem deals four damage to any target. I mean, you only have to uptick him twice to get that emblem. It's a bad. It's not great. It does nothing, right? Like it's a, it has the negative three ability of Chandra basically. Cause I, I assume you're going to have four mountains. So it's going to deal four. Maybe it deals five. If, if it's later in the game, you know, it deals more. Being a mono red deck only like this, this is bad. 
<clears throat> it just doesn't do anything. Like it doesn't like the plus two is like is like a non. It's like a it's like that Liliana that plus to get swamps, right? And like we know that didn't see any play, right? Yeah. If you if you if my opponent drops this and goes, I'm gonna plus to six. I don't care. <laughs> yeah, I'd be like, all right, cool. I don't I don't mind. I have no. All right. Koldatha Cackler, three mana for a two. But again, it's rare. It's not mythic. It's it's one of the rare planeswalkers, right? So like, you know, it's 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 expected, right? Like it's fine. You're a rare planeswalker. I get it. It's 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 War of the Spark level rare planeswalker. Koldatha Cackler, three mana for a two three with trample. It's a Phyrexian hyena, like you do. When it yeah. attacks, it gets plus X, where X is the number of permanents you control with oil counters on them. So this isn't counting the oil counters. It's counting the permanents with oil counters. Because I imagine if this was counting oil counters, it would be quite unruly. This is a great limited card. Seems seems solid. Agreed. Uh, yeah, this seems fine. Like, if you have two other creatures with oil counters on them, like, this is already a 4-3 for a 3. Yep. Yeah, I like this. This card's fine. Magmatic Sprinter, three mana for a three two with haste. Every time I see an uncommon symbol, I'm like, okay, cool. It might be constructed playable. Great. Let's take a look. Three two for haste with haste. When it enters the battlefield, put two oil counters on target artifact or creature you control. At the beginning of your end step, return it to its owner's hand unless you remove two oil counters from it. Cool way to move oil counters around. <clears throat> beginning of your end step, return. So you have to put the counters can, on. Go ahead. I was just going to say, you have to put the counters on it or else it goes back to your hand that turn. Right. So it allows you to every turn, get oil counters and attack. That is interesting. Yeah. I guess, I guess you get two every turn, right? This guy lubes up your board for you. Yeah, that's true. That's yeah. You got to lube it up. <laughs> oh shit. Molten, yeah, I think this card. I don't know. This is interesting. Again, it's like it really depends on the oil synergies, right? Like how much, how much can I take advantage of these oils, right? right. These oils. You could have catch me. <laughs> Molten rebuke, five mana for a sorcery. Choose one or both. You know, whatever you want to do. It deals five damage to a creature or planeswalker and destroy target equipment. For limited removal, this is really good. It's a great limited card, especially with all the equipments. Other than that, it's trash. Do you have an automatic? noise uh canceling feature that you're using right now that's a personal question because like sometimes you'll start to talk and it'll take a second for your mic to catch up and so it'll like it'll cut you off at the very beginning of what you're saying see like right there it sounded like you said oh like it's it, it didn't catch all of what you said because like those things usually take a second for you to like start talking and then it'll pick up your voice so cancellation Noise suppression. Yeah, those should be. Yeah, those you can probably turn off if those are on. Okay. Mm. Yeah, I'm going to be honest. Like, I don't mind ads on YouTube, but ads on Twitch are much more obnoxious because you're it's live, right? So, like, when they put an ad up, you're missing everything behind it. If I put an ad on Twitch, you can easily just skip the ad which is an option or when the ad is over, you still get to see everything after the ad. Like you're not missing content. It's not still going behind the ad. The thing that bugs me with Twitch is like that. It's the ads are still like the ads stop the content. Like you're missing that content. You never get to see, like if we're talking about a specific card and then an ad pops up, you just don't get to know what we're talking about. It's kind of frustrating. It's you... very frustrating. This card seems good though for, for limited. Yep. Nahiri's sacrifice two mana as an additional cost to cast this spell, sacrifice an artifact or creature with mana value X. Nahiri's sacrifice deals X damage divided as you choose among any number of target creatures. Nahiri loves dealing X damage to things. He loves sacrificing stuff too. Yeah. Sacrifice an artifact or creature. So like if I sacrifice a five drop, I get to deal five damage among any number of creatures. Seems okay, but it's a lot of work. It is a lot of work. Like, like at what point am I sacrificing a card that's large enough where I'd rather have this damage than just have that card? Right? Like, you're not. Am I sacrificing a six drop to take out two smaller creatures? Why wouldn't I just keep the six drop? 
I'm also yeah. two for wanting myself. Like at that point, if I if I'm killing one creature, so you know, I, I don't know. It's not. It's I, so I don't, good. I don't love it. Oxida finisher seven mana for a seven five with trample, and this guy has affinity for art for equipment. That's this easy. seems really good and limited. Very good. I mean, if you can get like three equipment out, this guy costs four mana. It's a seven five for four with trample. Yeah. Yeah, that's not bad. I would play this guy for sure. Yep. Rebel Salvo. Three mana for an instant with affinity for equipment again. Again, there's a very heavy equipment theme in this in this set, and I, I kind of like it. Rebel sure. Salvo deals five damage to target creature or planeswalker. That permanent loses indestructible until end of turn. I mean, this is great. We already this played three mana. For three, yeah, I'm like three. I was like trying to read it. I'm like, wait, three mana... And it has affinity, so like you can drop this to like one mana. And indestructible goes away. Those um whatever those that series of creatures that we saw. It kills this some seems of them. Like surprisingly good, like to the point where I'm like, why does this even need affinity? Like, why do you need to lower the cost? Like five damage to a creature or a planeswalker, it and, and it loses indestructibility. Like this is just this is like a solid pushed removal spell, I think. Yep. I think this card's great. Wow, that's fantastic. It's, it's going to see sideboard play for sure. Red Sun's Twilight. Let's talk about the, twi the, the the red Twilight. Destroy up to X artifacts. If X is five or more, for each artifact destroyed, create a token that's a copy of it. These tokens gain haste and then exile them at the beginning of the day. This does nothing for me, unfortunately. Like The problem with this card is that artifacts are significantly less common than creatures. And that's what, like, the other two... Like, the white one destroys all creatures, which is always useful in, in standard. Plus, you get you get to keep creatures afterwards. The black one kills a guy, and you also get to return something. I mean, all the other ones do stuff regardless. Like, in a regular game of Magic, those are all doing stuff. Like, this card seems... Yeah, this card seems good for Commander, for sure. Like, where, you know, I have four different opponents, and they're all going to have one artifact. Great. But like in a regular standard game, like you're going to kill one or two artifacts. And at that point, the rate is just not there. Like, I don't want to pay four no, mana to kill two artifacts. I don't think yeah, it's this any is, good. No, I think this is the worst one so far. Plus, like, I'll be honest. If I'm spending seven to eight mana on this card, why am I exiling artifacts at the end of the turn? Let me keep them. I just want to keep them. Five, five for five. Resistance Sky Warden with, with Menace and Reach. This is just a fine dude. Five five for five with menace and reach, like it's an early pick, a high pick in limited. I'll play him for sure. Sawblade Scamp, one red for a one one haste. Whenever you cast a non creature spell, put an oil counter on it. That's pretty good. That's a good rate. Remove an oil counter from it. It deals one damage to each opponent. Hmm. I mean, it's okay. It's like the it's we've seen the series of creatures that whenever you cast an instant or sorcery. They deal a damage or two damage or... Yeah, you know, this is just that, right? Like, except you yep. can only do it once a turn. Yep. It does have haste, though. So it's kind of like Thermo... What's his name? Thermo Alchemist? The O3 that taps to deal damage to each opponent. That's Thermo Alchemist, yeah. Yeah, like, this is kind of like that. But also, you do have the advantage of, like, the oil counters could be relevant. You know what I mean? Sure. So, you know, if this guy... If you're playing two spells, two non-creature spells a turn, and this guy gets two oil counters, that could be very relevant for a lot of your other creatures. Yep. So... Yeah, I, I I don't hate it. Okay. Shrapnel Slinger. Two mana for a Phyrexian Beast 2-2. Two, two. When it enters the battlefield, you may sacrifice a creature. When you do, destroy target artifact and opponent controls. It's a pretty tough rate to destroy an artifact when we've already seen... Okay, it is. But what if this was just Shatter, right? Like, you sacrifice itself, it destroys an artifact. Oh, this is you... That makes sense. This is a two two for two that you could also just use as a as a an artifact destruction. I didn't realize it could sacrifice itself, so that yeah. that's pretty I, that's pretty cool. Right, I I think this is actually just fine. Like if they don't have artifacts, you get a two two. If they do, that you want to you want to kill one, you can you can just sack this guy. You could also sack a worse creature. You know what I mean? Like, yep. I, I think this is kind of versatile. It's kind of cool. Yep. Slow bad iron. I mean, is it better than a card like Embreath Shieldbreaker? I don't think so. But it's better than I, it initially looks. You know what I mean? And plus, this might you don't you, you don't have access to something like Embreath Shieldbreaker in standard, so this might be your one of your better options. 
for just an artifact destruction spell, like tacked onto a creature. Also, this lets you sacrifice uh, the one one that deals damage based on its power. When it dies. Yeah, so this is a sacrifice outlet. So. Uh, three mana for a three, three slow, bad iron goblin, slow, bad being a, a, a staple in the magic lore. Phyrexian goblin artificer sacrifice an artifact and tap it Add an amount of uh, red mana equal to the sacrificed artifacts, mana value, spend this mana only to cast artifacts or activate abilities of artifacts. So I sacrifice my Thran dynamo. This gives me four mana that I can only spend on artifacts or artifact abilities. I don't know. It seems whatever. This card strikes me as something that like could be broken, but I, you're really going to have to point it out to me. Like You're really going to have to work to, to make it happen. Yeah, no doubt. I don't hate it. And it's a 3-3 three, three for 3. It's, got an, it's a unique ability. It's much better in a larger card pool, basically. Yeah, but, like, the thing is, like, if they... Is it even red ramp, though, really? Because, like, you've already paid for the card you're sacrificing. You know what I mean? Like, if I play a Signet for two mana, and then I sacrifice it to make two mana, like, I've already invested in this guy. I've invested two mana into the Signet. Like, it's it's less... It feels less rampy and more postpony right like i'm putting five mana into turn turns two and three and maybe i can use it on turn seven i don't think this is any good one time you know what i mean so Solfim mayhem dominus he's a red dominus four mana for a five four if a source you control would deal non-combat damage to an opponent or a permanence in opponent controls Source deal not so if I if I burn them if I shoot them with something, it deals double that damage to that player or permanent instead. So this just makes all your spells deal double damage. And a little tapper dude, a little pinger dude. Yes, and then for three mana, two of it Phyrexian, discard two cards, put an indestructible counter. That's one of the easier indestructible counters though, because usually you're gonna have two cards. I think this card's terrible. Really, it's a trap. It's a trap. What what red what red deck is gonna want to is gonna want to discard their last two cards? Uh, I don't know. Have you heard of Hazaret? He's not in standard. I, <laughs> yes, thank you. That's you still asked the question. I answered the question. Okay. Um, I mean, like if they go to kill this and you discard two cards to make it indestructible, like you're basically just losing one, right? Because one is the countering that spell. It's a two for one. They're two for one in you, but you're not two for zero in you. Plus, you get an indestructible creature out of it. I honestly think this is one of the better ones so far. What? Dude, like Tor Torbran, um, like all of the cards that deal like X damage more or twice as much damage, they're always playable. That's a huge difference because that those all affected creatures. Yeah, this that's true. So like I could play Torbran on four and attack and do something. This card has to survive and I have to untap. Yeah, like three people, five, four for four that doubles spell damage. Its body and first ability are already good. Card is gas without the indestructible line. Like, I think this card is surprisingly good. I think at most it's like a two of in a, in a red deck. I mean, it's legendary, so that's probably true. Right, but like, I mean, you know, it that that three mana, that three mana five damage spell, that all, all of a sudden that deals 10 damage. You know what I mean? Like you just start shooting their face with like random stuff. Like lightning bolt deals six, you know, like how many, how much, how much damage do you need to go to their face to, to, to kill them before they're dead? All right, all right. And it's just, it's a five, four for five. Like that's already a solid body and it can become, you don't even have to make it indestructible, but the option is there if they go to kill it. And you know how hard this is going to be to kill if they, like they can't make it, like they just can't deal with the indestructibility. Sure. I don't know. This card seems good. This is probably one I of my mean, favorite it, ones it, yet. I don't think it's... Did I, say ter did I say it was terrible? I don't think so, no. I, I just... I don't... I think it's a trap. It looks like a trap to me. I think even if you're just playing it for face value, though, it's good, right? Like, At it's just... Four a, mana, I don't know. Really? Hi, I'd and this card is gas. 
<laughs> yeah. So yeah, I apologize for the chat not being on the screen. For something, something's going wrong with my my Twitch extensions here. I don't have the little the little displays for some reason. That's uh, I'll probably just restart OBS after this. But for now, we're just kind of stuck with it, and I apologize for that. You guys are missing chat, but um, you know, we'll try to we'll try to keep you posted. Thrill of possibility. I wonder if this card's any good. Two mana for an instant, as additional cost to cast the spell. Discard a card. Draw two cards. I don't know. It doesn't it, really it doesn't really do anything for me, I guess. Okay. No, this card's obviously fine. These are always good. Uh this is obviously significantly better than the the sorcery versions too, right? Like Tormenting Voice. Yeah, Tormenting Voice being the sorcery version. Urobrask's Anointer. I wonder if this is going to be the last one. You know, but I don't. Four mana for a 4-2. Artifact creature for XE and Wizard. God, they're really pushing these type lines, dude. When Urobrask's Anointer enters the battlefield, it deals X damage to any target where X is the number of permanents you control with oil counters on. This is just Mogus Fanatic, right? Yes, I was thinking that. Seems seems okay in Limited. I mean, it could be a, a curve topper in Limited um, to get last points of damage. We've seen a lot of oil counter stuff. I'm actually wondering, based on the, the the concentration of oil counters, if there's an uh, the, if the mono red deck in standard is going to be oil based, and a card like this is just going to end up dealing five to to your opponent. Yeah, I mean, because this is well just done. fanatic of Mogus did that right. Like you just play a four two for four and end up dealing five or six damage to your opponent's face. I mean, I don't think it's constructed playable, but it's definitely limited good. <laughs> the Urchai. I think this card is bad, so it'll probably kill me when my opponent plays it. That's correct. Yeah. I, I think this card is decent. Like all of the good red cards we've seen so far, like the 3 2 Haster that, that for three, the one, the zero one for one that, uh, you know, cares about oil counters. Like all of these cards have oil synergies. This is also non combat damage. So if you play this with the Dominus out, it doubles that damage. Oh, yeah, the two four drops in my red deck. It's it's not unheard of. Perforos and 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 Fanatic of Mogus were staples. Urobrask's Forge, three mana for an artifact. At the beginning of combat on your turn, put an oil counter on Urobrask's Forge. Okay, so you're just getting a free oil counter. Then create an X1 Red Phyrexian Horror with Trample and Haste where X is the number of oil counters on Urbrass's Forge. Sacrifice that token at the beginning. This this with the Anointer seems insane. This card seems really good. This is just kind of like a, a Red Bitter Blossom where the, like the creature dies, but it gets bigger every turn. And it has Trample. The creature you're making has Trample. Yeah, they're Ball Lightnings. So the turn this comes into play, you make a 1-1. One, one. It does something on the turn it comes into play. You play a pre-combat, you go to combat, it makes a 1-1. One, one. Then it makes a 2-1. Then it makes a 3-1. This feels like it's really good. I mean, I definitely think it's good. I think it's. I don't think it's good because it makes the X-1. I mean, obviously that's good, right? But I think it's the oil counter every and the ability to manipulate oil counters that makes this card potentially very good. Yeah, like if you have the card that puts two oil counters on this, like all of a sudden you go from a 2-1 to a 4-1. Yeah, oh, right. Or the first oh, yeah, turn you put it at a 1-1, one, one, then you get a 4-1. And then it's get, it gets plus two, so it's actually a 6-3. So, yeah, with Trample. Uh, this card seems... No, it wouldn't be 6-3. Why not? Oh, you're saying be a put five, it on, three. on the 1-1. One, one. Yeah. The plus two, plus two goes on the 1-1. One, one. So this adds, that adds two oil counters. Plus the plus two, plus two, plus the one oil counter that was on there. So it's a five, three, not a six, three, but still like this getting tra the, the, the creature having trample is, seems extremely relevant. This card seems good. It's good in multiples. Like this is a card that you have to deal with, right? It almost has like a kind of self sulfuric vortex feel where each turn, it's just kind of ramping up and you, you have to deal with it. No, it reminds me of shrine of burning rage. Yeah. Except this is a lot more, this almost feels like way more pressure because Shrine can only hit you once. Yeah, and it does nothing until it does hit you. Whereas like this is right, every turn you're like, okay, next turn you're going to have a 5-1, I have to deal with that shit. Next turn it's a 6-1. What if you have multiple of these? <laughs> like This this will make me want to potentially look into an oil deck. I think this is pretty cool. I like it a lot. This card seems really good. I have you yep. dripping. I, I, 
I wasn't gonna say anything, but I drooled. I got a little YouTube coming out. You YouTube you who coming out of my mouth there, and I was like, oh no. It's on the. It was on the hidden side though, so I probably could have gotten away with it, but I, I didn't feel honest about it. So, vindictive flame stoker, one red, for a one two Phyrexian wizard. Whenever you cast, see, okay, so here's. This is a one two for one. It's a red card. It's a rare, and it has a seven mana ability on it. Like for some reason, all of those cards seem cool to me. Like Dragon Master Outcast, Invokers. Yes, but this is rare, so I feel like it's going to be. Let's see. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, put an oil counter on it. Okay. So I cast like three things. Let's say it has three oil counters. Seven mana. Sacrifice it. Discard your hand. Then draw four cards. Oh, it costs less for each oil counter on it. Oh wow, this seems actually really good. Does it not? No, it's too it's it's too weak. What? It's a one two, and it and it has to stay on the battlefield. No one's gonna kill this to, though. If they're killing uh -huh. this, they're not killing something else. I mean, you can make that argument for any card we talk about. Sure, but like, I, there's certain creatures I don't mind dying. Right, like if I have a four four dragon and a one two. The odds are the one two is going to stick around, where the four four is going to die, right? So, like, if they're not killing this, if they're killing this, they're not killing something else. the The point of it is, and someone said in chat, there's no one's wasting removal on this. You're right because they don't have to because it costs seven. So if you cast this on but turn one, I can sit there for three turns and not give a shit about this card. And then when you go to kill it, I go opt. I, I go opt consider something else and then I pay three mana to activate this because my graveyard has been filling up with like a like thought scour. We just had an argument about thought scour and like how like filling the graveyard is good and like it putting putting cards like just playing you're just playing non-creature spells naturally. I don't know. Like also consider equipment. Like when you play any equipment, this guy gets a counter. Here's my issue. My issue is this card dies to literally every single piece of creature removal that exists in even the standard format, let alone other formats. Every I don't think one that, of them. I don't think that matters. Like I, I really think that like if again if they're wasting the removal on this, they're not killing something else. You don't have infinite removal. You only have a site a finite amount of removal. Sure. But I mean I that, that doesn't I don't I don't know. That doesn't make sense to me because what I'm seeing is if I pay one mana to cut this down, you paid one mana, we, we it was an equal trade off. Sure, that's fair. But you spent well, yeah, okay, but but the problem is like if they're using their one mana to kill anything larger than this, you've lost. So for a one mana rule spell, this is your best value because you've spent the same amount of mana they've used. So the two mana three two that makes a treasure or uh the token that you could sacrifice and give um the vampire, give something negative X, negative X, right? Oh blood like, blood I, so, yeah, sure. Blood something, yeah. So I don't under I don't understand why if I have a cut down, I don't feel I could care less about the three two. This draws four cards. There, I don't think there's anything wrong with utilizing my cut down on this instead of a, th a two mana three two. I, I I would go on a I would go on a limb and say this is going to see standard. This is going to see constructed play in either older formats or in standard, because exactly. If, so you're look look at a card like Monastery Swift Spear. The only reason Monastery Swift Spear is good is because you have a high concentration of non-creature spells. So if I'm playing enough if enough non-creature spells to make Monastery Swift Spear good, it is likely I am also playing enough non-creature spells to draw four cards with this. We'll see. We'll get to revisit this on a on a later stream. We'll see. Yeah, I'd love to talk about this at a, at a later date because I think that's a very interesting card, and I'd like you to talk about it tomorrow. It. Yeah, let's talk about it tomorrow, and we'll see what's happened since then. Okay. All right. Volt Charge, three mana. It deals three damage to any target and proliferate. This is just a this is a reprint, but it's still a good one. Yeah, it's it's solid removal, and we've seen a, a ton of three toughness creatures. We have seen a ton of three toughness creatures. That's true. Yeah. Uh, Volshock Splitter. Wow, that remember that when, when like five cards ago, I was like, I wonder if this is the last card. And you were like, there's like Miles six more cards. This stupid That's idiot he has no idea. <laughs> Volshock, because I'm like, we're in the U's now. It's got to be close, and it's it's yeah. not close. I guess there's a lot of U's and V's in red. U's and V's. U's and V's. Volshock Splitter, four mana for an equipment with four Mirrodin. So it's a two two for four. Equipped creature gets plus two plus zero. Oh, so it's a four two for four, and you can equip for three. Yeah. I mean, I'll play it unlimited for sure. It's a it's a fine equipment. You get to 
keep it around. You get to put on your new guys. Yeah, it's whatever. But that was the last red card. I think red seems red seems shockingly better at the end than I thought it was at the beginning. That was a good pun. Shockingly better. Adaptive Shock. Spore Singer. Three mana for a 2-2 Phyrexian Druid with Vigilance. That's a good rate. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, choose one. A creature gets plus two, plus two, and gains Vigilance until end of turn. Okay. Or Proliferate. Yeah, okay. Solid limited card. Yeah, I think this is fine. Modal gives you two different abilities, both of which can do something. Armored Scrap Gorger for two mana. It gets plus three, plus zero, as long as it has three or more oil counters on it. So it could be a 3-3. Three, three. And you can tap it to add one mana of any color. And when it becomes tapped, exile a card from a graveyard and put an oil counter on it. That's this interesting. Card this really card seems really, really, really good. So it's not so only good. is it... Not only is it graveyard removal, it's ramp, and it becomes a threat after three activations. Yeah, th this is like, wow. in a bad rare pack, this is arguably first pickable. This card's really good. Yeah, if you have multiple of these, holy smokes, dude. Plus, like, holy crap, like, there's so many, like, it's, it's artifact removal that you're not reducing your card quality to play. Yep. You know what I mean? Like, there were decks that played, like, Paradise Dry Dryad or Druid. Dryad? Paradise Druid? Paradise Druid is one. Yeah, like, I mean, that's just a 2-1 for 2 that makes a mana. This is an 0-3 for 2 that makes a mana, but it also has, like, artifact removal. It has a graveyard removal, and it also has plus 3, plus 0 oh after its third activation. Like, that's this is really good. Like it. Bloated contain Contaminator. This card seems absolutely bonkers. 3 mana for a Phyrexian Beast. It's a 4-4. Four, four. With Trample, Toxic 1, and when it deals combat damage to a player, Proliferate. Uh, wow, this card's busted. Do you remember Steel Leaf Champion and how hard you had to work to, to yeah. get a 5-4 for, 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 for 3 mana? Yeah, this is... Oh my god, you're right. It's only one green. This, yeah, this It's card's one green. Really you could splash this guy. You don't even have to play Toxic for this. Even Old Growth Troll. Even that guy's green, green, green. Like, I don't know what happened where where the four fours for three went from triple green to one green to single green, but I, this card's amazing. Yep. Like, the proliferate part seems totally unnecessary. It gives you toxic for two, right? It does give you toxic for two. But it also, like, you proliferate on your planeswalkers. Like, you can play this into, like, a four-mana planeswalker, then you attack... And then you just proliferate on your Planeswalker the turn after it comes into play. It adds oil counters on your la on the guy from the last guy we just saw. Oh my god, dude. This card seems bananas. Yeah, it's really good. Questing Beast Jr., yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Branch Blight Stalker. For two mana, you get a Toxic 2-3-1. Trash. Cool. Crank Canker Bloom. Two mana for a 3-2. Sacrifice it, choose one. Destroy an artifact, destroy an enchantment, or proliferate. This card so, I like a lot. I think this card, yeah, like, so if you look at, like, a card like Naturalize. Naturalize is two mana for a destroy an artifact or destroy an enchantment. For one more mana, you get a 3-2, plus you get the option to proliferate. It's just an Outland Liberator. Yeah, it, this, this card seems great. I like it a lot. I like these cards where, like, Hey, if I need to destroy an artifact or an enchantment, it's here. But if I yeah. don't, I get a 3-2 out of it. I get a body out of it. Yeah, it's good. I like it. Because the problem with the card like Embereth Shield... So there's there's two different card types like this, right? One is like the Embereth Shield Breaker, where you have to use the ability first, then you get the creature. So if they don't have it, you can't play the creature unless you want to lose the option to get rid of the artifact or enchantment. But if you play a card like this, you get the creature and then you get to save it until you want to get rid of the artifact or enchantment. So, you know, sometimes one is better. Sometimes the other is better. It's, there's kind of an interesting tension there. But like in this situation, like a three, two for two that just has this ability sitting. It's like a, it's a Viridian Zealot, right? I don't remember that card. Yeah, that card's from Onslaught. That's, or it's a, it's from Darksteel. Uh, it's an elf warrior for green, green. It's a two, one. And for two mana, you could sacrifice it to destroy an artifact or enchantment. So this is a 3-2 instead of a 2-1. Then 
the mana cost is easier. And instead of two mana, it's one mana, and you also have the option to proliferate. So it's basically an upgrade in every way. Solid card. Very solid. Carnivorous Canopy. Three mana for a sorcery. Destroy an artifact, enchantment, or creature with flying. If that permanent's mana value is three or less, proliferate. Solid limited card. Yeah, these are always fine. I mean, I'll, you know, sometimes you'll have to play one of these. Just having a, having the card that destroys a creature with flying in your sideboard is just always so good. Yep. Because it's just removal at that point. It's removal for what, some of the best threats, right? Like, this is, this is totally fine. Conduit of Worlds. This card looks interesting. Four mana for an artifact. You may play lands from your graveyard. Tap it. Choose a non-land permanent card in your graveyard. If you haven't cast a spell this turn, you may cast that spell. If you do, you can't cast additional spells. Activate only as a sorcery. This does this seem, it seems, this seems okay. Good. It seems good to me. I mean, it's good, right? Because you just can cast whatever you want from your graveyard. But I don't know. I, I it seems slow. One per turn. I can't cast anything else that turn. I mean, realistically, you play this on four, like. On turn five, six, or seven, like how many cards are you going to be playing? You know, like what if you have, I mean, like what if you just have big planeswalkers like a Karn or like, I don't know. This card seems, I like the potential of this card. It'd have to be in like a real, real mid range deck. Well, yeah, for sure. It's four mana, you know? It's the, the point is like with this card, you're capitalizing on playing one card a turn. So you don't want to have like a bunch of one and two drops in your graveyard, right? Like you want to be able to play big spells. Yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know what to say about this one. And just playing lands from your graveyard is good, right? Like strip mine wasteland. Like there's a bunch of cool stuff you can do with that. Like always having another ramming up excavator slash cruise, like crucible of worlds is three mana. This is one more mana. And the tap ability is significant. That's a good way to look at it. I mean, this only costs one more than your typical play lands from your graveyard card. Yeah. I don't know. I think it's interesting. Like if they, if they like if they kill your Nissa and you just play this and tap it, get your Nissa. Like how do they deal with your Nissa after that? Like you just play Nissa who shakes the world every turn or something. Yeah. And pioneer. I don't know. It's interesting. It's definitely an interesting. It's also not legendary. So like you could, I guess it, that doesn't matter though. That's every, yeah. every, yeah, every part of this card invalidates a second copy. Like you can only play one, one land, no matter how many you have. And if you tap it to activate it, you still can't play two spells. Even if you have two of these. Yeah. Contagious Vorak three mana for a three, three. Holy shit. This is so much text for a common. When contagious Vorak That's enters the common. battlefield, look at the top four cards of your library. You may reveal a land card from among them and put it into your hand. Put the rest in the bottom of your library in a random order. If you didn't put a card into your hand this way, proliferate. I like this card a lot. That's surprising. I was like, I didn't know what to expect, but that's actually really good. You either get a land or you can decline and proliferate. That's the three mana, three, three, get any, it doesn't have to be a basic, get any land. I mean, this is great in a three color deck or something. Oh yeah, for it's, sure. I, you, you know, know looking, looking four cards deep, that this is kind of fixing. Yeah. I like this a lot. I like it. I even mean I it's standard. Good. I mean, three threes for three have seen play historically. Like that's that's a thing. The 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 three three for three from Streets of New Capenna, Jewel Jewel Thief, I think. Jewel Thief, yeah. Like that card's awesome play. It made a treasure token. Like that was a thing. Yeah. It's not unheard of, and like this is just a three three for three that draws you a card. Like yep. Even exactly. Three, 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 three could be decent. Card. Yeah. Copper long legs, two mana for a one three with reach. And you can sacrifice it for two mana to proliferate. That's fine. Whatever. The body don't impress me much, you know? <laughs> Evolved Spinoderm. A classic a classic design. Your, your four mana five five. It enters the battlefield with four oil counters on it. It, ha it has trample as long as it has two or fewer oil counters on it. Otherwise, it has hexproof. This is kind of confusing because I'm like, okay, which one is it? It's got two. Okay, hex okay it's hexproof now. Oh, okay, now it's trample. At the beginning of your upkeep, remove an oil counter from it. Then if it has no oil counters, sacrifice it. I mean, this is your Blastoderm, Calcederm card, right? Yep. I don't hate it. I don't think it's any good. If you give it haste, it's good. You get that That's extra fair. attack out of it. 
That's fair. I don't know. I don't see. I don't know if I don't hate it because my nostalgia factor for Blastoderm and Calciderm doesn't allow yeah. me to. Like I'm like those are such nostalgic cards for me that I'm like this 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 hits for me. It brings me back. That being said, I don't know if I'm I'm removed enough to to, to judge it outside of that. You know what I mean? This proof is is real, right? That's a very very good ability to have. If it did not have hex proof. I would just tell you it's trash. That's unfortunate. I mean, hexproof is yeah. I mean, it's, it's totally relevant. It's like Kaito, right? Kaito comes into play, you activate it, and then it phases out. Yeah, so it's it's protecting it, itself, right? This card for at least two turns is going to exist. This is in the same set as the four four for three with abilities. Yeah, that's true, but it doesn't like the thing about magic decks is you get to play more than one card. You know what I mean? Like just because I have the the four four for three for three doesn't mean I can't also play this. Like it's it's not a situation where it's like it, this this has a really really good green card in the set, so no other green cards are playable. Like you know what I mean? That's just it's not necessarily how that works. Evolving adaptive yeah. one mana green for a zero zero well that's terrible let's keep going just kidding uh it enters battlefield with an oil counter on it it gets one one for each oil counter on it whenever another creature enters the battlefield if that creature had greater power or toughness it just We've has evolve it just has evolve that's it just, just evolve. Has, it, well it's, it's better than evolve right no it's i mean no that's yeah, evolve I mean, right? if you're moving oil counters hold on experiment one yeah, it's literally experiment one. Evolve. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield, if that creature has greater power or toughness, put a 1-1 one, one counter on this creature. Um, whenever a creature, if that creature has greater power or toughness, put a one, put an oil counter on this, which is a 1-1. One, one. Yeah, I, I mean, like, yeah, you could move oil counters, but you could move 1-1 one, one counters too, right? Like, so I don't know. Like, Also, this is kind of confusing. Like, if you give this to 1-1 one, one counters... You have to keep those separate from the oil counters. Because what if you can remove oil counters and you want to know which are the oil counters? And so I have two different types of counters. Like, it's fine. It's totally fine. I'm just I'm just nitpicking because that seems like a tracking issue where I'm like, the oil counters are giving it plus one, plus one. But, you know, we have plus one, plus one counters in the game that also give plus one, plus one. So it's kind of like... Yeah. It'd be good in a green beatdown deck. That's for sure. <laughs> it just wants to be greasy. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's true. Grease these bad boys up. Expand the sphere. Four mana for a sorcery. Look at the top six cards of your library. Put up to two lands onto the battlefield tapped and the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. If you put fewer than two lands, proliferate a number of times equal to the difference. Seems good I if you like... want this four mana, two land effect. I like these cards that have like reduced feel bads. Yeah. Right. Like if I, if I'm not able to find two lands, if I, if I don't even want two lands, it still does something. You know what I mean? Like this is still, I get to proliferate twice or I get to proliferate once and find a land. Like you can almost choose which one works best for you. Yep. Because like, they can't force you to find two lands. You can't be like, well, there's two lands. I got to pick them both. I could just pick one land. And then proliferate once if I want to. Like these are basically modal cards in disguise, which is really sweet. I I love versatility in Magic. Like the the more versatility, the more the more choices, the the more skill testing it is, and the you're, more you're a man of options. I I yeah, that's like whenever I see a card with more options, like the better the game is for me. Green Sun's Twilight. Let's see if this one holds up to Green Sun Zenith, which is easily the nope. best of the Zeniths. Nope. <laughs> All right, X and one green. Reveal the top X plus one card. So I'm, I'm playing. I got six mana. I'm paying my six mana. I'm revealing seven cards. So you're revealing cards equal to the total mana you spend on this. In other words, choose a creature and or land from among them. Who the, who wants to get a land for this amount of mana? Put those cards into your hand. Oh god, and the rest on the bottom of your library in, in a random order. If X is five or more, it was. I spent seven. Instead, put the chosen card on the battlefield or into your hand and the rest on the... Okay, so... Eh. Too much. It's like just the worst summoning trap, right? 
See the unwritten was six mana. You get two right. creatures. Summoning trap was six mana, but you saw seven cards. Is that right? Yeah. So you're spending one less mana for summoning trap. No, yeah. Summoning trap is seven mana or seven, seven, seven cards. So that would cost eight mana for this. So summoning trap was two less mana and you could, you could play it at instant speed. Right. So this like card is only good at six. This has to be nine mana in order to be better than summoning trap. And it's still a sorcery, crash. not an instant. So like summoning trap didn't see any play whatsoever. And that, which is unfortunate because I love summoning trap. And I think like putting Emrakul's into play for free at instant speed is really good. But uh, unfortunately this, like if I play this for four, like no one's going to play. I'm going to pay four mana on my turn to put a land or a creature maybe into my hand, depending on what I hit. It's not even a card I choose. It's a random creature for, for like, I get to look at three cards and I get to put a random creature in uh, of the top three cards. Like this is just worse than any blue draw spell for the same amount of mana. It's real bad. I'd rather just draw the top three for four mana, which is a literal card in black, right? Draw three cards, take three damage. Yeah, you're, you're right. Like I'll just draw three instead. And, and then I don't have to choose, right? Yeah. This is only good if you're, if your X, X is five or more, if you hit something you really like, and even then, it's worse than cards that already exist. Okay. Oh. Icker Spit Basilisk. Three mana for a 1-3 with Death Touch. Toxic one. It's just too Full much mana. Block yeah, it's limited. three mana for the... Yeah, oh right. You're going to play this in limited almost every time because it has Death Touch and it has Toxic. Yeah. And these cheap like roadblocks with Death Touch are, are sometimes hard to get by, so... Yeah, I mean, if this was an instant, I agree. If Green Sun Twilight was an instant and I could just slow it, slow roll it at the end of their turn, I think that's significantly better. But having to waste my entire turn on this and then your opponent's like, oh, go, cool, they did nothing. Now I'll get to do whatever I want my turn. Like, it's just so much worse. Incubation Sack. One green for an artifact. It enters the battlefield with three oil counters on it. Four mana in a tap. Remove an oil counter. Create a... Th 3-3 three, three colorless Phyrexian Golem. Activate only as a... It's just so much mana. I don't think it's any good. It's too slow. I am, I am paying four mana. Like, so this starts doing something on turn four, and I have to spend my whole turn to do it, and then on turn five, I get to spend my... Like, this takes up your whole turn four, five, six, and seven, like, just to make a 3-3. Three, three. And like seen, We've seen multiple two mana cards that have the ability to attack and trade with this or potentially past it. So this is no good. Plus like you're spending five mana for your first three, three, and then you're spending nine mana for two, three, threes. Yeah. Yeah. I don't like I, for cards like this. I'm not even sure why it says activate as a sorcery. It costs four mana to activate. You're not surprised. If you have this in play and four mana untapped, you're not surprising anyone with a, with a token, with a, with a golem token. Like I know what you're going to do. Like it's not, g give me like, give me something, man. Infectious Bite. Two mana for an instant. Target creature you control deals damage equal to its power to target creature you don't control. Each opponent gets a poison counter. This seems really good. I also love that they finally called it Bite. I guess they've always called it Bite, right? Rabid Bite. But it's funny yeah, that they, right. they're leaning yeah. into it, right? Because Fight is the two creatures deal damage, but Bite has always been your creature One deals day. damage to their creature. Yeah. Without the, without the retaliation. It's a solid limited removal spell in the green. I uh, I would even go so far as to say this is constructed playable. Cause like uh, um what's the what's the what's the brawl spell from Call Time that saw play? It costs one mana though. This costs two, but they get a poison counter, which might be relevant. You'd have to see what the the green deck is that exists. Agreed. Yeah, I agree. But I don't yeah. wanna yeah, I don't wanna um I don't want to count out a two mana removal spell that like, especially cause if you, if you play the three mana creature with the three mana four, four, right next turn, you just have that kill, whatever they have, they get a poison counter. You attack with it. They get toxic one. It proliferates. That's already three poison counters. Like sure. there could be a, a definitely like all of these, all of these future cards. Like if you have four of these in your deck, everyone after the first still gives them a poison counter. Even if your creature doesn't, if you can use it, you can have your one, one hit their four, four, 
even if it doesn't die, they still get a poison counter. You know what I mean? Like yeah. there's no, there's no stipulation to how they get the poison counter. They just get it. We've seen one in every color that gives a poison, right? Except for red, I think. Yes, because I think red gave oil counters instead. Yeah, we've seen draw a card, get a poison counter. Uh, I can't remember what the black one did, but it also gave. I think it did. Um, it minus three. Might, no, I can't remember. But there's a black I don't one. Th- that gave I don't know. If, yeah, I don't know if white did either, though. Right? Did white? Because I feel did like white, white. I don't think so. I think we forgot white. But I think white and red are the mirror in colors, right? Like, so I think they're averse to giving poison counters. I think sure. white and red are the oily colors. No, I guess green has been oily. I don't know anymore, man. There's a lot going on. Tell me about this mantis. Lattice Blade Mantis. Lattice Blade Mantis. Four mana. It enters the battlefield with two oil counters. Slippery AF. Whenever it attacks, you may remove an oil counter. If you do, untap it, and it gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. I mean, it's attacking as a 5-4 Vigilance twice, and then it's just a 4-3 for four, 4. I think this is fine and limited. This is great. All limited, yep. Plus, you don't have yeah. to do it, so you can like save it until it's good. It's, Mazes, we've seen cards like this with the Voltaic Brawler. Where you you know it gets a buff for as long as it has the oil counters on it, basically. Maze's mantle, three mana for an aura, with flash. When it enters the battlefield, if an enchanted creature has toxic, that creature gains hexproof until end of turn, and they get plus two plus two. It's whatever. Yeah, it's really good. I, that seems great. Like you're countering a spell, you're giving them a permanent plus two plus two at instant speed. Like it seems cool. Oh boy, Nissa Ascended Animist. This is a fucking card. Three, green, green, Phyrexian green, Phyrexian green. So this could cost anywhere from five to seven mana. It can cost five life, five mana and four life, six mana and two life, or seven mana. And it's completed. So for every Phyrexian mana you pay with life, it gets two less counters. So this can start, this could be a five mana planeswalker with three counters, six mana planeswalker with five counters, or a seven mana planeswalker with seven loyalty counters. Plus one, create an XX green Phyrexian. What is this? Horror. Horror. <laughs> Dude, I can't even read it because of the, the, the art in the background. It's so hard to see this card. Yeah, I'm like, what's what does that say? It's like, there's like four different colors behind it. XX Greed Phyrexian Horror Creature Token, where X is Anissa Ascended Animist's loyalty. So again, you're making a 3-3, three, three, a 5-5. Five, five, no, a 4-4, four, four, a 6-6, six, six, or an 8-8, eight, eight, depending on how much, you know, how much loyalty she's coming into play with. Negative 1, destroy an artifact or enchantment. Negative 7, until end of turn, creatures you control get plus 1, plus 1 for each forest, and they gain trample. I mean, it looks great, right? I It just, it scales... Right. Even the lowest the lowest level of it makes a four four dude. I mean it's for, a, for plussing it, no less. It's not even like a negative. Yes. Like if you want to make a four four with a planeswalker, you're gonna have to like negative two that planeswalker. And it and if you cast it on seven, it can immediately win games the moment you cast it. Right. You make an eight eight or you can just ultimate it. Like for, for seven mana, this is a negative seven plus one plus one for each forest it's, it's trample. At, it's yeah, it's it's at minimum like an overrun, right? Mm-hmm. So there's no I mean, chance of playing this and you have less than three forests. Yeah. This card's really good. It's, I think it's kind of an easy choice. I think so it's been I the have, best playing walker routine. I still have Vivian Reed in my queue because I really like her abilities. Like I think plus one to draw negative to kill a flying creature is really good as well. And yeah. I, I'm wondering if this just replaces it because it's really, really good. And I love it. I think this, this, this is, has more higher upside than Vivian Reed in my opinion. Mm-hmm. So I think that this, should replace it in queue. I mean, honestly, this is like a planeswalker that also has like a crater hoof stack to it. Effect, like, yeah, if you have six forests, your creature's getting plus six, plus six, and trample is utterly insane. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, I, I see Barman. I don't know if they are different enough. Like, Barman said, not replace, it's different. I think the negative one destroying an artifact or enchantment is exactly the same on both cards. I think the plus one on this making a creature is the same as the plus one from Vivian Reed finding a creature, except I don't have to pay for it. I, you know, they're they're moderately different, but they're both still giving you board presence for plus one, negative one to destroy an artifact or enchantment, and then they both have another ability. And I think when your cube is 540 cards, like it, it, that's a little too much redundancy to have both. Like you want to you wanna diversify the cards in your cube, I think. 
Noxious Assault. Five mana for a sorcery. Creatures you control get plus two, plus two. Whenever a creature blocks this turn, its controller gets a poison counter. Oh, wow. So if they if you attack with five dudes and they block four, they get four poison counters? Yeah. It's kind of interesting. But still, it's expensive, right? It's really expensive. It is five mana. It doesn't have trample. Like The, the problem is if this had trample instead, they're oh, probably right. going to die. If the, without trample and they're just getting poison counters, that's not a substitute for trample because, well, it really depends on how many they have, right? Like it, it, with green, we've already seen like a bunch of different ways to get poison counters between the bite card, the toxic cards, like they could have like six poison counters and this could really put them close. And then you, if you're proliferating, don't forget there's a bunch of ways to proliferate too on common cards. Yeah. 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 Like they could just be dead. Yeah. It seems solid. Definitely very good and limited. For sure, very good and limited, I think, as a one of. Yeah. I mean, I don't think it's any triumph of the horde, for sure, <laughs> you know? Oil Gorger Troll. Five mana for a 3-4. When it enters the battlefield, you gain three life. If you control a permanent with an oil counter, draw a card. Wow, that seems great. Very great and limited. Super three, good. 3-4 for five that draws you a card and gains you three? That's basically a Thrag Tusk. Yeah, that's really freaking good. I'll play this in Constructed. You no, would. Just kidding. Paladin <laughs> of Predation. Seven mana for a six seven. Toxic six. Jesus. It can't be blocked by creatures with power two or less. Holy shit, this thing seems insane. The nice payoff in um in limited if for this, sure. If this connects twice, you die. <laughs> yeah. Wow. But Toxic 6 is weird, right? Because anything over 5 doesn't matter. It either connects or it doesn't. And there's no way to remove poison counters. So what's the point of yeah, Toxic 6? Yeah, but with great, right? It matters. The extra one matters. That's, okay, that's fair. Sure, that makes sense. Yeah, I guess it was just weird because I'm like, it's either 5 and 2 hits or below and more than 2 hits. So it's like, I, yeah. I didn't see the point of like 6. Because, yeah, but I guess, again, like, if they hit you once with six, you only need to proliferate four times instead of five times. Which is kind yep. of arbitrary, but, you know, whatever. Plague Nurse. Four mana for a three, four with toxic two. Each other creature, for three mana, each other creature you control with toxic gains toxic one until end of turn. Activate only once each turn. Dude, green is really leaning into the toxic theme. It seems very good. It gives everything toxic too that has well that has toxic and limited again. Well, it gives this guy this paladin of predation toxic seven. Toxic so. three. <laughs> no seven. The paladin we just talked uh, about the last the, card. The last card, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it goes from toxic six to toxic seven. So now we've already better. agreed that's irrelevant. Well, now you only got to proliferate three times, you know. So it's relevant. This card seems good. Three, four for three is a good rate with toxic too. Like that's, those are fine stats. And then this ability is not nothing. Nope. I'm looking forward to drafting this set. This set looks fun. I can't wait to, I've been doing so much limited a lot in the past Zomb few years. Zombub said, I saw this nurse, but my brain just assumed it was uncommon. And I agree. This actually does feel uncommon. Sure. Predation steward two, two for two. It enters the battlefield with two oil counters three and a tap remove an oil counter from it target creature gets plus one plus two plus plus two plus two activate only as a sorcery why i don't like that you have to tap it uh, i wish it didn't have tap and it'd be a good card but i don't like it yeah plus two plus two actually only as a sorcery just for three mana like all oh, the all i just the realized it doesn't get flying it looks like it's flying no it does kind of look like it's floating yeah i agree no it doesn't do anything it's literally just a combat trick that you can't use in combat that isn't a trick that costs three mana. This card know. sucks. It's not great. Rustvine Rust Vine Cultivator. One green for a one-two. Tap it, put an oil counter on it. Tap it, remove an oil counter to untap a land. Okay, that's terrible. That's, that's not even good and limited. That's so bad. So I play this on turn one. On turn two, it does nothing but put an oil counter on it. On turn three, it's crazy. I get to untap a, one land for the oil counter I, I invested. Yeah, it's bad. What the... F I mean, I guess, like, if your goal is to put oil counters on things, like, that's fine. I guess that's... that's it's still so slow. That's your prerogative, I guess. Yeah. It's a one-mana common. What do you want from it? I don't know. Playability, I guess. <laughs> Ruthless Predation. Two mana. 
target creature gets plus one plus two it fights another creature you don't control it's fine good totally limited fine. card a, a sorcery again which is unfortunate but what are you gonna yeah. do yeah S- sky scythe engulfer six mana for a six five with reach and trample and it can't be blocked by flyers that seems great great six mana card and limited yeah for sure that's what i mean obviously i mean like there's yeah. a lot of trample and limited right? like it seems like all these creatures have trample or ways to get trample the red cards have a ton of trample there's a, a lot, lot of, of trample, trample man and menace We've reached the point in Magic where we're saying it's a bear with only a mo- mediocre upside garbage. I think we reached that point a while ago. Oh my god, that was so long ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You need to have a, if you're a bear, you need to be a really good bear. Tarmogoyf was was like when we reached that point, you know. Silvok Battle Chair. <laughs> so okay, well, I guess you're sitting in it. Six mana for an equipment. Four Mirrodin. Interesting interesting okay so you're getting a 2-2 red rebel so it's automatically a 6-6 with trample the equipped creature has plus 4 plus 4 and trample solid 6 drop it's a, again another trample 6-6 six, six for 6 with trample and then you have this equipment that gives plus 4 plus 4 and trample on the board that seems I'm taking fine. this over the engulfer that we just saw uh yes I'm definitely taking this over that but I, I'm not going to pass the other one if it's like in the pack and there's nothing great for me so yeah Thirsting Roots. One green for a sorcery. Choose one. Search your library for a basic land card. Reveal it, put it into your hand, then shuffle. Or proliferate. Nah. This is no Traverse the Underworld. This is no Underworld. Land Grant. I like land, land Grant. Yeah, I mean... I don't know. Basic land... If once you Like, once you put the word basic on there... I, like I, I think my my uh, like my eyes glaze over. I'm just yeah. like, okay, I understand you don't want to get like a dark depths. You don't want to be able to get like a thespian stage. You don't want to be able to get, uh, you know, maze of ith, whatever. Like for some reason though, like I feel like you should be able to get. Like if this said, search your library for a land with a basic land type. I think that upgrades cards like this exponentially without yeah. making them super broken. I think like if you, you could get you're, you're fixing. Yeah, hearsay TV just said basically and type would be better word. I agree. Like we should upgrade this terminology to basic land type so I can get a taiga, I can get a stomping ground, I can get a tropical island, whatever. It's never gonna happen. They don't want that it's, on that on the on these cards. I agree. I agree. It's never gonna happen. But me personally, the way I like to play magic, I think that would make this a playable card, and right now I don't think it is. Thrun, Breaker of Silence. Oh my god, I'm so excited to see Thrun back. I love this. I haven't even seen this card. 5-5 five, five for 5. Thrun got a little upgrade. He can't be countered. He's got Trample, because everything in this set has Trample, apparently. I would be interested to see how many cards have the word Trample on them. I'm going to look that up after this. Thrun, Breaker of Silence, can't be the target of non-green spells, so, so no spells, basically. <laughs> your opponent's yeah. control or abilities from non-green sources your opponent's control. As long as it's your turn, Thrun has indestructible. Jesus. This, oh, man, so he's Thrun basically, is... he has to be board wiped on their turn. That's it. Dude, I love or Thrun sacrifice. so much. He's such a cool, he's such a cool troll. This makes me so happy to see. Oh man, I like this. I like this a lot. This card seems cool. Super stupid, strong card here in green. It's going to be great. Definitely out of the sideboard because it can't be countered. That's for sure. It's trample. Like this card's really good. When you attack, like they they have no profitable blocks because he's uh, indestructible. Like, God, Thrun is such a pain in the ass too. I love that Thrun's mo is being a pain in the ass. Like that's if you see a Thrun, he's a pain in the ass. Yeah, I like it. Titanic growth. We know we know this one. Two, four, plus four plus four until end of turn with, for two mana. Sure, More, we yep. know we know the drill. Seems fine. Tyrannic's atrocity. This, this name, if I saw the name of this card, I'd be like, oh, that's a rare for sure. It's a common. It's four, a common. four for five. It has haste and it has toxic. Three. Why does my green card have haste? I don't know. I mean, those are rare. Those are few and far between. Ground, Breaker, Thunder Mare. They have haste. Usually they're reserved for rares. Usually we don't just slap haste on green commons though. Yeah. I would be curious to see the number of hasty green commons. I'm going to write that down. I'm going to write down some things I'm going to look up after this. Green sure. cards with haste that aren't rare. And also trample. Number of 
cards with trample. Okay. And here's we'll... another one for you. <laughs> eight eight for seven mana. Tyrannix Rex can't be countered. Of course it can't. Trample, of course. Haste, of course. Ward four, of course. Toxic four, of course. For anyone here watching, okay, that does not know Frank personally, this is the embodiment of Frank playing Magic the Gathering. <laughs> this card seems awesome. I, I love this card. This is like a Carnage Tyrant that yes. that had that's just been at the gym for like the past four years. Yeah, Ward Four basically means untouchable. No one's gonna spend. Yeah, you're you're if you have like a like a destroy target creature card, that thing's gonna cost you six to seven mana. Can you imagine this in limited. You you open this, you win. A hundred percent. Toxic Four means even if one point of damage gets through from Trample, yeah, they're that's still taking stupid. it. That's stupid. This card seems awesome. Yep. I'm excited. What's the cost on this and how many versions are there? I don't know. And this card is called Tyrannax. 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 Oh, it's probably Tyrannax. That's that's right. That makes sense. T-Y-R-R. Two R's. That's interesting. That's not what I thought it was going to. Oh, okay. There's a, there's this one. There's this one. There's three different versions, apparently. It's only like 17 bucks right now. You know. I mean, that's that's pretty big for a mythic. It's a dinosaur. <laughs> Tyvar's Stand. X and a green for an instant. Target creature you control gets plus X, plus X, and gains hexproof and indestructible until end of turn. This card's stupid good. Like, the thing is, like, this costs one mana to give hexproof and indestructible. It's, it's literally, it's a counter spell at one mana. The fact that you can pump it is just gravy. Uh, this card toxic, is really good. toxic does stack. So if it, you give it toxic one and it has toxic five, it will have toxic five and one, both of which will trigger when It'll it connects. Yeah. yeah, this card seems amazing. Yeah, this is just blossoming defenses. This is literally blossoming defenses that pumps, right? Yep. It's the same exact card. I'm checking the. Oh no, blossoming, blossoming defenses defense plus, two, plus two plus two. Plus You're two right. Two You're right. And hexproof. Hmm. Isn't there a card for one mana that gives Hexproof and Indestructible? Yes, Tamiyo Safekeeping. That gains you two life. This seems better. I mean, this uh, is. Yep, yeah, this seems better. This seems better than Hex. Than, uh, yeah, the, the being able to pump and, and have it scale in the late game is just insane. Yeah, this card is bust up. This card's a great version of this, uh, this ability. Unnatural Restoration. Two mana for a sorcery. Return a permanent card from your graveyard to your hand and proliferate. You know, in terms of regrowth cards, this is one of the better ones. Usually you're going to get a permanent in a green deck anyway. Uh, the proliferate is is great. You're not paying an exorbitant rate for this. It's two mana. I, I don't think it's... It's not going to see play, right? Because the, typically this card does not see play. But in terms of regrowth effects, this is a great variant of that, I think. Agreed. Venerated Rot Priest. One green for a 1-2 with Toxic. It's one It's one mana 1-2. It's not going to see any play. We already established that. Toxic 1. Whenever a creature you control becomes the target of a spell, target opponent gets a poison counter. Seems okay. I, I Like, is this good in Infect? Is the question. It's really good. No, it's not good in Infect, no. I kind of agree with you. And the reason is because you can't pump this to deal more poison counters. Like if no, this, this gets plus four, plus four, impact. they're still going to take one. They're going to get one poison counter. I will say this though. This is very good in multiples and standard. Oh yeah. They, they target one of your guys. They, they get three poison counters. Yeah. This, this is very good in multiples. So in standard, it could be something, but it's definitely not, not in fact. Okay. Yeah. That's, I can see that. Venomous Brutalizer, 4-4 four, four for 4. You know, for some reason, as a Magic player, a 4-4 four, four for 2 green-green, that just hits different. I don't know. There's so many iconic creatures at 2 green-green for 4 that for some reason when I see that, I'm like, this is good. Like Phantom Centaur, for example, is a... I guess that's not a 4-4, four, four, though. 
Toxic. How was it? I guess that doesn't even work. Okay. Toxic All three. Right. Players still, yeah, okay. Whenever Venomous Brutalizer enters the battlefield, you may pay two if you do proliferate. Solid limited card. Very for good, sure. I think. Four four with toxic three for four is great enough. And then like if you have six, you just proliferate. Yep. Yep. That seems great. Viral spawning. Three mana for a sorcery. Create a three three Phyrexian beast with toxic one. So three three for three. Corrupted. If an opponent has three or more poisonous counters and viral summoning is in your graveyard, it has flashback. This seems like a very good limited card. This is this is really good, yeah. Uh, this is Give Call of the Herd for limited. God, remember, Call of the Herd has really come a long way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good, good grief, man. Yeah, that seems great. Zopendrill, Hunger Dominus. Oh, big Zopi. Four, six for seven mana. He's got reach. At the beginning of each combat, double the power and toughness of each creature you control until end. This has to be the most... Trashy. The big, yeah, this has to be the biggest effect on any of them, right? And then you have two Phyrexian mana and sacrifice two other creatures to put an indestructible counter on them. So again, no mana. You can pay that for four life. The only reason this is good is because you can catch somebody off guard and kill somebody with it, but it's so bad. Is it really that bad? I don't even know, man. This is so bad. Okay. It's seven, dude. For seven mana, I could cast that that other mythic dude. I mean, that's true. If you're, yeah, that's true. This is not good. Okay. I mean, the fact that it needs other creatures to to do anything is really like, I don't know. And you have to sacrifice them to make it indestructible. That's true. Sacrificing two creatures is kind of a big deal. This is no good. All right. I I would be surprised if it's all play. Now we're in the artifacts. We're almost we're almost we're in the home stretch now. Wait, should the artifacts be next? No, they shouldn't. That's not how that works. Hold on. Uh let me run to the restroom really quickly before we get going with this. Oh no. Pause. I've messed everything up. Okay. All right, we got the gold sorted out. Now we got gold coming up. Coming up hot. We got a Traxa Grand Unifier. Seven mana for a 7-7. Seven, seven. Uh, this is another card that super excites me. Flying. What? Vigilance. Death Touch. Are you being serious? You don't think so? No, go ahead. Okay. Lifelink. When it enters the battlefield, reveal the top 10 cards of your library. For each card type, you may put a card of that type from among them into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. You don't like this? No. Really? Seven mana? For a 7-7 seven, seven flying vigilance death touch. Like, like, if they don't kill it, like, they're dead, right? I mean, yeah. It, oh, read, let's read the card types. Artifact, battle, the card yeah, type battle, weird. creature, enchantment, instant, land, planeswalker, and sorcery. I mean, this could draw you like six cards. Mold Drifter is a 2-2 two, two for five mana that draws you two. This Don't is a 7-7 seven, seven for seven. seven. It's a 7-7 seven, seven for seven. We just saw an 8-8 eight, eight for seven in green, right? Now we're seeing a 7-7 seven, seven with four abilities. This can race that because of lifelink. Plus you're drawing like four cards off this. Buddy, I don't know. I guarantee you there will be at least one deck with an Atraxa in it. That's Rubber stamp that. That's my prediction. Let's make, we All should right. have predictions then revisit them. Okay. We'll come pre better prepared. I got one deck with Atraxa. <laughs> what was the other one? That the red creature, that red draw four guy will see play. Oh, the okay. one, two. Yep, yep. Yeah. Okay, those are my those are our two predictions so far. I think if you if you can think of any more, let us know. Blade Hold War Whip, three mana, one red white, uh, for an equipment with four Mirrodin, so it's a two two equipped abilities. You activate of other equipment costs one less. Why why not this one? <laughs> equipped creature has double strike. Equipped Way too abilities. expensive to re-equip. Yeah, like it's five mana to equip, but like why can't it reduce its own? 
I guess if it reduces its own, then it's like, well, why don't you just make it four? And then if it's four, it's not going to reduce itself. But then you're going to question, like, why doesn't it reduce itself? Then it's going to be three. And then it's not going to, and then it's like, okay, well, it shouldn't reduce itself. And then you're going to be yeah. like, well, why can't it? And then it's going to be two. And then it's you're just going to keep going down. You're in the rabbit hole right now. Right. It just keeps going down. Yep. Cephalopod Sentry, four mana for a star five creature uh, flying. Its power is equal to the number of artifacts you control. How many artifacts for this to be decent? Four? Four. Well, I think three it, it it's adds decent. itself. Oh, yeah. So it's always a one five. So two other artifacts to make it fine. Three, three, three at least. Three other artifacts make it really good, I think. Nah, it's not good. Char Forger. Three mana for a two three. When it enters the battlefield, create a one one red Phyrexian goblin creature. So it's a. It's essentially you're getting three three power, four toughness for three mana. Whenever another creature or artifact you control is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, give this bad boy an oil counter. Oil him up. Remove three oil counters. Exile the top card of your library. You may play it this turn. My problem is that like to get one oil counter for these creatures, something has to die. You have to lose a card. Like that's such a high cost. Like some of them are like, lose two creatures and one guy can be unblockable. You know what I mean? I guess these are all intent on like you getting oil counters some other way. That's really the goal. Because if it was like, if this was like, you know, with the card that has like put, if this was remove one oil counter, X all the top card, then that card that puts two oil counters on something is just so good. Yeah, it's so, way too much. I think we have to start looking at like the, the whatever another creature artifact dies, get an oil counter. That's just a bonus. That's not meant to be the, the main engine to get oil counters on this. That's just a, that's just a little bonus they're giving you. So if something happens to die, you can have an oil counter. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't think that's meant to be the, the, the driving factor, the driving method of getting oil counters. I think that's, that's just a perspective, a perspective shift that we need to have. Yep. Cinder slash Ravager, five, five, or six. It costs one less for each permanent you control with an oil counter on it. Okay. This could probably be a four mana, five, five. With Vigilance, Easy. and it enters the battlefield, it does one damage to each creature your opponents control. This is like that 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 T-Rex, right? That dinosaur in Ixalan that dealt one damage to all creatures. Oh, yeah, yeah. The one that comes with Polyraptor, yeah. Azuri Stalker of Spheres. 3-3 three, three for 4. Uh, it's clearly for Commander, I guarantee it. When it enters the battlefield, you may pay 3. If you do, proliferate twice. Whenever you proliferate, draw a card. Like, in order to draw the two cards, it costs 7 mana. Yeah, I don't... It's Commander, right? It's Commander I don't like card. it. Alright. Nope. It has kicker divination. That's true. Yeah. Kicker divination. <laughs> Glissa Sunslayer. One black green for a 3 3. So 3 minute 3 3. First strike. Death touch. Love it. Whenever she deals combat damage to a player, choose one. Draw a card and lose a life. Love it. Uh, destroy an enchantment. Absolutely love it. Remove up to three counters from target permanent. I think this is great. You can remove loyalty this counters from planeswalkers. So this feels like a, a mini questing beast. Yeah. Like yeah, if they have a planeswalker, really you can attack their face and then still remove three counters from their planeswalker. You can uh, draw a card. Like, this card seems great. This is this so good. I want to attack with it and draw cards. Yeah, this seems awesome. I, I love this a lot. Yeah. Jor Kadeen, first gold warden. 2-2 two, two for two. Trample, because of course. When it when Jor Kadeen first gold warden attacks, it gets plus X plus X, where X is the number of equipped creatures you control. Then, if Jor Kadeen's power is greater than four, draw a card. So if you have two equipped creatures, you're just drawing a card with this guy every time you attack. And he's a four four. Or she, they. I think Jor Kadeen is a gentleman. A gentleman. You know what I do I wish? Mean, I've wished before that magic did say he or she because I think it it's a little more immersive. And then it like it gives you like if if Joyra said, um, you know, when Joyra attacks, she gets plus one plus one or something, right? Because like then you're you're referencing the character and not yeah. the card object. And they are characters in stories and lore, right. so that would make so, sense. Yeah, I agree. 
And it would actually, it would be kind of cool to actually see like, if there's a trans character, it would say like, they get, you know, plus X or, you know, whatever, you know, I think that would be kind of cool to see on a card. I think. Sure. Sure. Yeah, it this seems good. Seems I mean, I, it's a two, two for two with trample at, at the very least. And it seems very easy to get equipment and limited. Like this is a bomb and limited. I, I wonder if this could see, is this Yeah, I good? think this is no question limited. This is this, I don't, I wouldn't necessarily say it's a bomb, but it is as close to a bomb as you can get just because it's so easy to remove. Um, but it definitely wins games and limited by itself. Well, you know what I mean? Um, I'm I'm saying for the sake of standard uh, it, or, you know, the Hammer Time deck in Pioneer, maybe this card seems good. Uh, yeah, uh, that's what I was thinking. But also it seems it just seems so easy to pick up equipment in the in the limited format as well. It's like it's just a no brainer. Yep. yep. Kaito Dancing Shadow. This is a lot of Kaito cards in like th in the past three sets, three or four sets. Four mana for a three loyalty planeswalker. Whenever I, I actually love passive abilities on planeswalkers. I think they were a great addition. I do as well. Whenever one or more creatures you control deal combat damage to a player, you may return one of them to its owner's hand. If you do, you may activate loyalty ability of Kaito twice this turn. So if you attack with just like your one one shitter, you could just bounce it. Whenever one or more creatures you control, you may return one. Yeah, okay, sure. Like, you can if you attack with three guys, you can return one of them to activate Kaito twice. Up to one target creature can't attack or block until your next turn. So you could like hit two of their guys. Zero draw a card. You could draw two cards. Negative two. Create a two two colorless. Just say drone. Artifact drone creature artifact, token yeah. with death touch. And when this creature leaves the battlefield, each opponent loses two, and you gain two. I think this card is really good. I think having an ability that's not a negative ability to draw a card is always going to appeal to me. Yeah, my thought process is if you have something getting through, the fact that this thing can protect itself and you don't have to hold back blockers because it can target two creatures and not attack. It's also interesting because you can go like, plus one, your guy can't block this turn, attack with my 2-2, two -two, bounce it, draw a card because I can activate Kaito again, replay my guy. And now it's kind of like it has vigilance. And, yeah. And Kaito also, and the creature that you targeted can't even attack on the way back either. So even if you, don't Oh, play it can't attack team, or block. You don't have to choose. So that's really cool. Yeah. For some reason, I thought it was like this, this, that creature can't attack or it can't block. You block, choose yeah. like, choose. it's like choose one, but yeah, the fact that it can't attack either is, this seems really good. It seems this is pretty kind, good. Yeah. This is kind of, it's a very complicated, versatile planeswalker. I don't. I feel like these abilities are in the wrong color, though. I feel like I don't. I don't really? feel like I've seen black and blue creatures that. Well, black you know, has we a lot of the, menace. Yeah. I don't. I don't. I don't know. Maybe because it was yesterday, I don't remember as much. But I mean, obviously, <laughs> it was the, yesterday. The, the two, the two mana unblockable dude, obviously goes ridiculously well with this. I, I think this card's sweet. I, I would play this yeah. in standard and construct. It's good. It's good. Like, I mean, like, like I said, like being able to plus one negate their attacker and their blocker, getting in with your guy, being able to replay it. And then also drawing a card or making negative two ink to make a guy is like, it just feels really good. Yep. Also. I love that. Like the two, two is when it leaves the battlefield. So that like, if you bounce it with your own Kaito, they take two, you gain two. So it's, you know, synergies, baby. Kaya, Intangible Slayer. I'm a big fan of a lot of Kaya cards. And it's not just because they're black-white either. I love black-white Planeswalkers, but I think Kayas are are particularly cool usually. Uh, so seven mana, three white-white, black-black for a six loyalty Planeswalker with Hexproof. Plus two, each opponent loses three and you gain three. Okay, that's not... Zero, you draw two cards, then each opponent may scry one. Interesting. Negative three, exile target creature or enchantment. If it wasn't an aura, create a token that's a copy of it, except it's a 1-1 one, one white spirit creature with fly. That's interesting. It's seven mana. Everything it does is 
kind of OP. Like the first is whatever, the plus two is whatever, but I mean it's still seven mana. But Karn, okay, let's let's compare it to like a Karn, right? So for seven mana, you get a Karn, which has six loyalty, and then a negative three for Karn is usually just exiling a creature. Let's let's be honest, ninety percent of the time. Or land. Actually, I'd argue it's land more than anything else. Sure, in a format where you can ramp out a Karn, it's a land. Sure. A late game Karn, okay. Yeah. Something offensive. But like negative three to like exile your your guy and then I get a cop like a copy of it, even if it's a one one, it's I'm still getting something out of it. Plus next turn I can just draw two. Yeah. No, the card this card's great. It's just I think seven, this card yeah. seems sweet. Plus hexproof. Hexproof is super nice. Yep. Uh the power of Karn is how quickly you can play. I don't think that's true. I think the power of Karn is definitely I think Karn is strong because you can play it early, but no one's in games oh, where you're playing Karn on turn six, like he's still a, a, a house. Yeah. Karn is like ridiculous. when you when you play Karn and you tick him up to ten, like your opponents are not doing great, even if you don't get rid of any of their permanents. Kethek Crucible Goliath, four four for four. At the beginning of your end step. You may sacrifice another creature. If you do, reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a non-legendary creature card with lesser mana value. So if I sack a five drop, I get a four drop or a three drop. Put it onto the battlefield, then put the rest in the bottom in, in a random order. So you're just, it's like a reverse birthing pod. <laughs> lesser I don't, mana value. That's weird. I don't know. I was reading it again. I don't, it's weird. I mean, hey, it's four, 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 four. I mean, I guess if I have like one two drop in my deck that wins me the game, I could sacrifice my three drop to hope to like to hit it, but I, I don't get it. This is sad pod. If this was an activated ability, that would be super busted bonkers, right? Like, hey, you go to kill my three drop, I'll sacrifice it to find a, a card that costs less. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't. Yeah, I guess I, I'm I'm too dumb to be like, what's the, like it's such a it's such a build around that like you have to you have to like subvert your, your feelings about like why this is even good. I'm like, I don't even understand how this could be good, let alone why I'd want to work so hard to make it good. It seems bad. What about Lucka bound to ruin another completed planeswalker Two red, green, Phyrexian, red, green. So f one, two, three, five mana, but you can play it for four. He's got five loyalty. If you play it for four, he comes in to play with three loyalty. Plus one. At, these are so hard to read for some reason. Like, it's because the font is so small, and it's on, like, this multicolored background. Add red-green. Spend this mana only to cast creature spells or activate abilities of creatures. I mean, that's pretty good. I think creatures, like, give you... You can, you, can, you can cast something, which is nice. Yeah. Negative one, create a three three Phyrexian beast creature token with toxic one. Negative one, it's that's basically Garrick, right? If you play this for four, he comes into play with three loyalty. He has you negative one him to make a three three beast. The only it has prolifer it has toxic one. So this is basically just a negative one Garrick. Plus yeah. one is also similar to Garrick because it adds two mana. Garrick untapped two lands. Two lands. So yeah. at plus one and negative one, it's basically Garrick, but this guy has the upside of being able to cost five and get two more loyalty. Uh, negative four, it deals X damage. Jesus, I can, I can barely read this, dude. It deals X damage divided as you choose among any number of target creatures and or planeswalkers where X is the greatest power among creatures you control as you activated this ability. So you play... Oh, no, that, that wouldn't work because it would ETB with three with three counters if, it, if you cast it for Phyrexian. Right, you'd have to have a guy in play. Yeah, I mean, it, it seems okay. I, it, it's not card advantage, though. I think you this is on free. par with Garrick Wildspeaker, for sure. And I think Garrick Wildspeaker is a, a completely... It's a great card. It's okay. Yeah, I, I, I think this is really good. I think all of the abilities are, are solid. I think playing this on turn four, plus wanting it, uh, or like negative wanting it, and then on turn five playing your eight eight trample haste ward guy. That's fair. That's to play big dummies. That's fair. That is yeah. pretty good. You're right. Plus, like he protects himself. So, like on turn four, you're making a three three, and he's 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 not even super exposed. Yep. Yep. You're right. I don't know. This seems good. I think this card is great. 
it, it looks good to me. We, I'm there's tempted clearly to, a red green deck. I'm tempted to replace Garrick Wildspear with this guy in the cube, just because yeah. it's it's the the abilities are so similar. Mal Malkator Purity Overseer one one four three one white blue. Uh, it's a Phyrexian Elephant Wizard, so that's super cool already. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, create a 3 3 colorless golem artifact creature token. And then at the beginning of your end step, if three or more artifacts enter the battlefield under your control, create a 3 3 artifact creature token, a 3 3 golem. This is just an upgraded blade splicer, right? Yeah, it actually, it literally it's is not, an upgraded. It's not strictly creature. better because it's legendary, so you can never have more than one. And yep. it's harder to cast, right? But it's got its downsides. But I think for most situations, if you're able to cast this, it's just a it's a better choice than Blade Splicer, because you're just gonna like be able to get you're gonna get more if if you're able to, you know. Yep, it makes an artifact, yeah. dude, when he, which is relevant in some decks in those colors. So pretty good card. Yeah, this card's sweet. Malira, the Living Cure, three three for two. God, how wa Watch Wolf has come really far, man. If you would get one or more poison counters, instead you get one poison counter, and you can't get additional pointers. <laughs> you know what? If I was gonna get five, instead I'll just get one. El Exile Malira Living Cure. Choose another target creature or artifact. And it, when it's put into a graveyard this turn, return it to the battlefield under its owner's control. This feels like Safi Eric's daughter, doesn't it? It's, it has the second ability of Safi, yeah. Safi or, is sacrifice it when target creature is put into a graveyard, return that card to the battlefield. Yep. When it's put into the graveyard, return that card to the Yeah, it's, it's literally it's literally just Safi ability. And also the yep. art is very similar to the original Safi where like you're looking at her from behind and she's kind of looking back. It's basically the same art. It's the same. It's the same card. It It is the same card. Except, you know, it's a three, three and it's got a first ability. It's a, this is card's good. Yeah. I mean, right. It's anti-toxic. Yeah. I mean, it's just, I think it's a solid three, three for two with two cool abilities that are sometimes relevant. So. We haven't. I don't think we've seen a blue, uh, green, white deck, but um, if it exists, That's true. It's, it's good. I mean, it's a legendary card, so you know, the blue white deck is going to have hundred cards in it. Sure. Mig Laws Maze Crusher four four for three. Ooh, one red green. It enters the battlefield with five oil counters on it. This, this seems ridiculous already. One remove an oil counter from Mig Laws. It gains vigilance and menace. That's pretty good. Two, remove two oil counters. It gets plus two, plus two. Three, <laughs> excuse me, <laughs> remove three oil counters, destroy an artifact or enchantment. This card seems, seems really good. really good. It's a four, 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 three at the very least. And then it has three abilities on it. This is really, and one of them is artifact or enchantment destruction. It's very good. Even, this it's, even though it's expensive. Of, this reminds me of Savage Knuckle Blade a lot. Oh, I love Savage Knucks. I do too, dude. I wish I don't understand why Savage Knuckle Blade didn't see more play. I'll be honest with you. It just, it's a four, yeah. four for three with multiple different abilities. This card seems sweet, dude. Yeah, I like it. Can't wait to lube up this bad boy. Is lube up going to be like? Um, is that going to be like the theme of this set? Like people are drafting and be like, you. when this guy comes into play, I'm gonna lube him up. Uh, I can't hate to break it to you, I'm a Deethus, but uh, this dude comes pre lubed. Yeah, he's already lubed. You don't have to lube him up. He's Nahiri, lube. the Unforgiven. Uh, another completed Planeswalker. I think this is the last one. No, it's not. Vraska's. Damn it. There's so many, dude. Four mana, one of which is Phyrexian. So three mana for a three loyalty Planeswalker, four mana for a five loyalty Planeswalker. Plus one until your next turn up to one target creature attacks a player each combat if able. That's like the reverse of protecting itself. Yeah. Plus one, discard a card, then draw a card. That's like, that's just Nahiri. Zero, exile target creature or equipment card with mana value less than Nahiri's loyalty from your graveyard. Create a token that's a copy of that, of it. That, that token gains haste. Exile at the beginning of your next end. This does, this seems terrible. I don't like any of these things. Yeah, this, I don't understand it either. A previous Nahiri would plus in order to to rummage. So this doesn't this is worse. Until this your next turn rummage. up to what? Oh, it does plus. It, you're right. For some reason I thought it was yeah. zero. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. I, I take that back. 
Until your next turn, up to one target creature attacks a player each combat. If a like what? That's so weird, dude. Exile target creature or equipment card from your graveyard. Create a token that's a copy. It gains haste and exile it. It has to be less than her loyalty, right? So you can exile if she comes into play with five, you can you could zero her to exile a four mana or less creature. Uh, this is no good. I don't know. It seems really Yeah, uh, it rams creatures into your blockers, but like if I'm a red white deck, I don't want to be blocking. Attacking. <laughs> like I'm not keeping blockers back in my red white deck. You know what I mean? Like it just feels Necrogen Rot Priest, 1-5 for 4 with Toxic 2. Whenever a creature you control with Toxic deals combat damage to a player, that player gets an additional poison counter. 3 mana, target creature you control with Toxic gains Death Touch. That's crap. It's fine. It's, it goes in the Toxic deck, right? Yeah. Ovica, Enigma Gol Goliath. This looks really weird. 7 mana for a 6-6 six, six flyer. Ward, three mana, and pay three life. That's a significant ward cost. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, create X-1-1 one, one red Phyrexian goblin creature tokens where X is the mana value of that spell. They gain haste. Strong like, ability, but it's too like expensive. It a lot. It's too expensive, but I like it a lot. Yeah. I mean, it's hard to kill. It's hard to kill, and like if you cast a four mana spell after this, you get four one ones. Like, I think it's cool. It's a Phyrexian Nightmare as well. Rhea Evor, Bane of Bladehold. Phyrexian Knight, for a, it's a 3-4 four for 4 mana. It has Battle Cry. So this is basically Hero of Bladehold so far. It's got Battle Cry, it's a 3-4 four for 4. At the beginning of combat on your turn, the next time target creature would deal combat damage to one or more players this combat, prevent that damage. Next time, target creature. Okay, so you can target a creature. If damage is prevented this way, create that many 1-1 one, one colorless Phyrexian Might Artifact token. So basically I could say, okay, I got my 5-5. Five, five. He won't deal damage this turn. I'll make five Mites. So it's interesting. It's very Hero of Blade Holdy, where it's making tokens. It's got Battle Cry. It's a 3-4 four for 4. This card sucks. <laughs> it's okay. I think it's fine. I, I don't mind it. I, I, I'm where. Uh, when am I going to want to attack and prevent damage? When you want five one ones that become ten damage next turn because of battle cry. No. It, let's say it's a it's a real. I'll pay you for I'll pay you on Tuesday for a hamburger today situation. Let's you know talk I mean? about I'm paying you on Tuesday. I'm not getting anything until Sunday. What well, it's it's one turn. You think one turn is like five days? Yeah, but the problem is you cast it on four. Right. You can't attack until five, and no, then you're not even utilizing. This doesn't have to attack. Huh? You play this on four, you attack with a creature you already have out. Like say I have a three three. I play Fair. this on four, I attack with my three three. I won't I won't deal damage, so I'll make three mites. Next turn I have three one ones that are gonna attack as two ones because it also, it also has to be something that's dealing damage to prevent it. Next turn creature would deal Yeah, but it deals it just has to deal combat damage. It doesn't have to get through. It just has to deal the damage, even to a creature. Like, if they block with a 1-4, I'll be like, okay, players. break the damage. It says players. Combat damage to one or more pl oh, you're right. Okay. I still think it's... I think it's... I think it's fine. Yeah. I like it. You don't. Okay. I'm going to write Put it, it on down. The list. Yeah, that's what I was going to do. <laughs> I like... Rob does not. Okay, cool. Serum Core Chimera, four mana for a 2-4 flyer. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, put an oil counter on it. Okay. Remove three oil counters, draw a card, then you may discard a non-land card. When you discard a card this way, it deals three damage to a creature or planeswalker. Activate only as a sorcery. Again. It's too expensive. It's a little expensive, yeah. Three oil counters is a lot. Yeah, I don't like it. Yeah. I think it's trying too hard to be Crackling Drake, right? Like, it, the, the presumption here is that every three spells, you get to deal three damage. So if I play, like, Opt, Consider, Thought Scour, that's a, that's a Lightning Bolt. That's three damage because of the oil counters. Yeah. Um, but you also have to discard a non-land card to do that, so it's four spells. Yeah, it's just, you're working too hard for three damage, I think. Yep. Slaughter Singer, 2-2 two, two for two, Toxic 2. Whenever another creature you control with toxic attacks, it gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. 
It seems it's solid, but I don't. There wasn't toxic in white, right? So why am I playing white? There was some toxic in white. There's some, there? yeah, yeah. There's a ton because they also have the mite, the the mite ba- bitter oh, blossom. You're right. You're right. Sorry. Yeah, toxic. This is actually a surprisingly toxic set for white. Well, two two mana for toxic two is good. And it's and it's just a two two. It's a two two for two with toxic two, and then like it's a lord. It's a toxic lord. Oh, it's all creatures that attack with toxic get plus one plus one. I thought you picked a creature and gave it no, plus one. No, whenever another creature attacks, it gets plus one plus one. That's really good. That seems yeah, that's solid. A, that's a might lord. I like it. Tainted observer, two three for three with flying and toxic one. Whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, you may pay two if you do proliferate. This is a very, very good card in limited. I think very good. I mean, it's a two, three for two at flyer at worst, right? Like that's above rate. Plus it has toxic yeah. one. Plus it has proliferate. Yeah. Like this, this is just doing a lot. Yeah. This is hit you once. And then I can literally turtle. And every time I put a creature into play, I just give you another toxic. Just give you another toxic. It's pretty good. <laughs> Tyvar, Jubilant Brawler, one, three mana for a three loyalty planeswalker. You may activate abilities of creatures you control as though those creatures had haste. Plus one, untap up to one target creature. Negative two, mill three cards, then you may return a creature card with mana value two or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. Everyone really loves this guy. I don't care that much. I don't see it. Can you move your fist, bro? <laughs> yeah, like, I don't... Is it Bowler? Oh, Jubilant Bowler. Yeah, that's interesting. Because he's cause he's a bowler. Because he's got a really strong right arm, you know? Both arms look strong. Sure. He, he's, he's ambidextrous. <laughs> I don't care about... I don't know. Like, this card's probably fine. I just... Like, I think three mana Planeswalkers should always be considered. They should always be evaluated closely. Um... Untapping a creature is like, eh. Giving your guys haste, that's good. I think that's great. Oh, it's not even haste, though. It's just activating abilities as if they have haste. The only reason I like this card is because of the mill three cards text. Everything else is just kind of meh to me. Venser I like cards that Corpse mill. Puppet. This is really Sorry. sad because I love Venser, and I don't think this is a good Venser. One, three for two. Lifelink and Toxic one. I love it when my one power creatures have lifelink. That's the best. Whenever you proliferate, choose one. So I have to proliferate. If you don't control a creature named the Hollow Sentinel, create the Hollow Sentinel, a legendary 3-3 colorless Phyrexian Golem artifact creature. Jesus, so many fucking words, dude. It's a legendary 3-3 colorless Phyrexian Golem artifact creature token. Like, why does it need 40 words to just describe a token? Target artifact creature you control gains flying and lifelink until end of turn. This just doesn't... This sucks. I have to proliferate in black and blue, which seems, I guess blue has a lot of proliferate, but like, I don't know. I don't, I, we haven't seen enough proliferate stuff to make me think there's a proliferate deck. It's going to like justify making a three, three from, yeah. yeah. Look how they massacred my boy is, is, is completely accurate here. Vivisection yeah. evangelist, five mana for a four, four with vigilance corrupted when it enters the battlefield and if an opponent has three or more poison counters, destroy target creature, planeswalker, and opponent controls. This card's fantastic if they have three or more poison counters. It's, yeah. It's unbelievable, but otherwise it's kind of just fine. It's a 4-4 four, four for five with Vigilance. 4-4 four, four Vigilance for five, yeah. Voidwing Hybrid. 2-1 two, for two with flying and toxic one. So already I think this is great. I'll play a 2-1 two, for two with flying any day. When you proliferate, return it from your graveyard to your hand. This card seems fantastic. Yeah, this card's really good. I wonder if this is constructible, even. A two I think this for is two constructed playable. With Toxic, and it keeps coming back as long as you proliferate. And, yeah. you know, with Toxic counters, you can proliferate in standard and just give them keep giving them Toxic counters. Yeah, and you can, and you can bring multiple birds back. Oh, yeah, you get like three back. Yeah, this is good. I keep having to take one of my earbuds out because the battery keeps dying. I like this. Argentum Masticor. I haven't actually seen this card. I've seen the art, which was very unsettling. Five mana for a five, five first strike protection from multicolored. I love that. I think protection from multicolored is extremely strong in constructed formats. Yep. At the beginning of your upkeep, sacrifice it unless you discard a card. When you discard a card this way, destroy a non-land permanent and opponent controls with mana value less than or equal to the mana value of the discarded card. Holy crap. This seems really good. 
So if I discard a four drop, I can kill one of your four drops, basically. Or a three drop, or a two drop, or one drop. So it's not like you're just discarding cards away for the into the aether. Seems good. Venser, blue black proliferate is bad. Bat, blue black proliferate is good. I don't think the bat makes proliferate good. I just think the card coming back is good, and I don't need other things to make it good. Like, it's good on its own without proliferate, whereas Venser is not. Yep. Yeah, this card it's seems eight. really neat, especially with first strike and protection from multicolored. I, I like this card a lot. This card's kind of cool. Yeah, it, this may very well see play. I think it's good. Argentum Masticor. Atraxas. Oh, now we're in the artifacts. I didn't even realize because the last card was an artifact. And I didn't even didn't even hit me. Three mana for a two two. Atraxas Skitterfang enters the battlefield with three oil counters on it. At the beginning of combat on your turn, you may remove all an oil counter from it. When you do, target creature you control gains your choice of flying, vigilance, death touch, or lifelink. This is like a, a poor man's steel seraph, right? <laughs> yeah, this is very very limited esque, and it's okay. It's not bad. Is it another? No, it's target creature. It can target itself. Yeah. So, like, I mean, at worst, it's a 2-2 flyer for three for three turns. And then yep. if you can get more oil on it or it gives another creature death touch or another creature lifelink, like, lube get three. <laughs> uh, Basilica Skull Bomb. Apparently, this is a cycle. One mana. Uh, you can all of them sacrifice to draw a card for one mana, I believe. And then for three mana, two and a white, sacrifice it. Target creature you control gets plus two, plus two, and gains flying until end of turn. Draw a card. Hey, when can you activate this, do you think? Instant speed, That's right? Because it's like a combat trick? That oh, sucks. only a sorcery? Got it. I mean, they cycle for two mana at, at worst, but then they do something, they draw a card, and I think they're fine. I, I, I think you definitely Artifacts play Artifacts lover. So I want these cards to be great. I think it's awesome. I love one mana and then one mana sacrifice to draw a card. I love that. But like, why? Like we have, why? Why sorcery? Uh, these could be I very agree. good playable cards. They replace themselves at the worst, though. I think both abilities replacing themselves makes them it kind of kind of like, gives them a little more value. Obviously, we're going to see the other ones here in a second. But if they didn't activate as a sorcery, then they become Urza Saga targets, right? Then they become. Better. I mean, they're still always the no. saga target. Oh, I see what you're saying, but they're not worth yeah. playing now. Yeah. Dross, Skull Bomb, one mana, you know, cycle it. Three, two and a black, sacrifice it, return target creature you control your graveyard to your, uh, you, target creature from your graveyard to your hand. Draw a card, activate only as a sorcery, so it's, it's just a raised dead. It's better Again, than the last one. Sorcery. Dune Mover, two mana for a two one with toxic one. When Dune Mover enters the battlefield, you may search your library for a basic land card. Reveal it, then shuffle and put that card on top. I know. Limited staple. <laughs> I mean, it's fixing your mana, right? Yep. Yeah, it's not bad. The Filigree Silex. Two mana for a rare. Put it, Tap it, put an oil counter on it. Tap it, sacrifice the Filigree Silex, destroy each non-land permanent with mana value equal to the number of oil counters on the Filigree Silex. So... Could be a better ratchet bomb. Yeah, right. Exactly. So you're putting a... Yeah, it's okay. So right now we're at ratchet bomb status where like you're putting a counter on it, then destroying with mana value equal to the number of counters. Tap it, remove 10 oil counters from among permanents you control and sacrifice this. It deals 10 damage to any target. It's like it's a ratchet bomb that they just stapled the Bullis' Citadel ability to, right? Yep. Okay. I mean, it still seems better than ratchet bomb, but it's a, it's a legendary card too. So if you want to play multiples, like... Like a lot of times I know you'd have like two ratchet bombs. You'd put one on two, one on three. And then you're like, okay, cool. I'm safe. This you can't really do that with. So yeah. Furnace skull bomb, one mana, uh, same, same, same situation. The uh, ability is one and a red sacrifice. It put two oil counters on an artifact or creature draw card activated. As a, like again, why is this a sorcery though? <laughs> like Stupid. I don't know. Graz. It is what it is. Graze Unstoppable Juggernaut. 7-5 for 8 mana. Uh, juggernauts you control attack each combat if able. Juggernauts you control can't be blocked by walls. Other creatures you control have base power and toughness 5-3 and are Juggernauts. In addition to... They're really leaning into the Juggernaut theming here. This is very strong. It's whatever, right? But it's a this is your This is a Juggernaut commander. That's all this is. They wanted a Juggernaut commander, so they stuck this in the set. 
Yeah. Like, that's it. <laughs> Icker plate goal. It makes your mites five threes. Yeah. Icker plate golem, three mana. Uh, when it, whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, if it has one or more oil counters, put an oil counter on it. So, oh, a winding constrictor for, for oil counters. Creatures you control with oil counters get plus one, plus one. And this is a two, three. This is just an oil lord. A lube lord. Lube lord. <laughs> yeah, this He's is just lube lord. Yeah, this is beautiful, man. This is amazing. I think this card is actually pretty decent. Like yeah. it, it doubles the oil counters that go on cards, and then it all those creatures get plus one plus one. It does two I things like that it. I think are good. I don't care what you think. You're stupid. I don't care. <laughs> maze skull bomb, one mana, three mana for a sacrifice maze skull bomb. Target creature gets plus three plus three and gains trample. Draw a card. Activate only as a sorcery. Okay, we know the drill. Mirren safe house, three mana. As long as Mirren Safe House is on the battlefield, it has all activated abilities of all land cards in all graveyards. This does nothing for me. I don't know. That's so weird. That's such a weird card. It's very specific, right? Like, I have to have a maze of it in my graveyard. And it's also activated abilities. So, like, you know, Tabernacle is not going to do anything. Uh, you know, for example, like, does it? Is it just meant to tap for mana? Is it a mana rock? I mean, it's good with if you sacrifice the sphere, right? I mean, if you sack a fetch land, this is a three mana mana rock that becomes a fetch land that you can sack to. All right, this is going to sound stupid, but I completely ignored the fact that it has a casting cost. This thing is trash. Oh, did you think that it was, was a land? I No, I knew it wasn't a land. I just, but I knew it was talking about land. So I just assumed, I'm like, okay, this thing's trash. And it's all lands in all graveyards. So if your opponent has a fetch land, they crack it. You play this for three. You're just ramping. I don't know, man. It's really weird. Gosh. Yeah, I guess Nykthos is an option. I don't know. Monument to Perfection. Three and a tap. Search your library for a basic sphere or a locust. Sphere searcher. For a basic sphere or locust land card. Reveal it, put it into your hand, then shuffle. You can also get cloud posts or glimmer posts. Yeah. Tap three. Monument to Perfection becomes a 9-9 Phyrexian construct artifact creature, loses all abilities, and gains indestructible and toxic nine. Activate only if there are nine or more lands with different names among the basic sphere and locust lands you control. This feels very... Um... God, there's a card that it reminds me of a lot. I can't think. Oh, it's like Field of the Dead. It feels like Field of the Dead. We're like, hey, if you have seven unique lands or, you know, nine unique lands, you get a really cool threat. I mean, it's gets, it gets indestructible. It has Toxic Nine. It's a nine nine. Yeah, I don't know. It's too much work for me. I mean, for two mana, you tap it for three and you get to just find a basic land. You get to get, to, get a land out of your library, a basic, a locus, or a sphere. Like that's a pretty good search, and then you play. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Like, I don't know. I, I, think if that's, it, I don't know if taking my second and third turn to do that are, is good. I don't know either. But like this, it does a lot. It's got a lot of things going. Journeyer's kite was good twenty years ago, sure. But this isn't. This is a journeyer's kite that like doesn't get only basics, and it also becomes a nine nine at some point in the game. Wait, wait a minute. It's not legendary. Wait a minute. So we didn't see anything called Locust Lands in this set, right? We went through the lands. No, they're probably just referring to Mirrodin because Mirrodins usually have Locusts. Yeah. So locusts. that means in order for this to do anything in standard, you'd have to have all the basic lands in play and then four of the five spheres. That's trash. I don't, mm, it's, I don't know. It's only Mirror basic convert. spheres. Two mana for a 2-1. One. Toxic 1. Pay two life and tap it to add one mana of any color. This is just your typical two mana mirror that adds mana. This is this is the, the version of that in this set. I don't like it. Mirror Custodian. Three mana for a 2-3. When Mirror Custodian enters the battlefield, scry two. Then each opponent may scry one. There's cards like this in limited it's fine. In sets yeah, all it's the totally time. Fine. Yep. Mirror Kinsmith. Four mana for a 3-1. You've already lost me. When Mirror Kids in this battlefield, you may search a library for a mirror card, reveal it, put it in your hand. Oh, that's actually not as bad as I expected. Two for one. Searching a library for, to draw a specific card is great. Four mana for a three one. I'll do that. I don't mind it. 
Phyrexian Atlas. This is very Dante's Inferno art. I, I have not seen this, but this art seems way that better is than pretty common. cool. I think this is awesome. Uh, three mana. Uh, tap it to add one mana of any color. When an Atlas becomes tapped, each opponent who has three or more poison counters loses a life. This is uh, this is a pristine talisman. This is like the reverse pristine talisman, right? Instead of you gaining a life, they lose a the life if they're corrupted. Sure. It's fine. Art it's is a, cool. it's a, yeah, the art is fantastic. Prophetic Prism, a uh, solid reprint. We are uh, This card's always great. Yep. I love the art on that, too. Yeah, this is really good. Prosthetic Injector. <laughs> one <laughs> mana. Equipped Creature gets plus O, plus two, and has Toxic one, and the equip cost is one. When there's an equipment that's buffing your only your toughness, I'm just not on board. I'm with you. Rib skiff. You want to take a ride on the rib skiff? It is a Actually, four mana. Draw a card. I'd love to. It is a four mana four four with toxic two. When it enters the battlefield, draw a card, and it has crew three. This card's great. I think this card is fantastic and limited. This is this is a great. Yeah, this is so good. Yeah, I, I think this is great. Yep. Uh, Soulless Jailer. This guy. This guy is fantastic as well. Two mana for an O four. Permanent cards in graveyards can't enter the battlefield. Players can't cast non-creature spells from graveyards or exile. Brutal. This is just a great hate card, right? It'll be played Brutal. in modern most likely. Yeah, it's for an sure. artifact. Yeah. Yeah. This it's, is a, great. it's just it's a graft digger's cage on an, on an O four, so it blocks. You know. Yep. Staff of Completion. This is an interesting one. This card busted. One, yeah, pay, tap and pay a life. Destroy a permanent you own. Oh, no, not a one I own. Tap and pay two life. Add one mana of any color. Tap and pay three life. Proliferate. Tap and pay four life. Draw a card. Five, untap Staff of Completion. Personally, I think the, the costs are a little high on this. Here's the way I see it. It's a staff that doesn't cost five mana. It costs three. And, right. and you can activate and do any of those four things. The turn, turn it comes out, you don't need mana for it. That's true. So obviously paying for life to draw a card is a lot. But the fact that I can do that immediately on a three drop staff, I think this card is better than it seems. Here's, here's, here's say TTV says... It's a commander card. And I kind of agree with that because, you know, 40 life lets you activate these abilities. Like 40 life makes these abilities say pay half a life, pay one life, pay one and a half life and pay two life, which is significantly better. Yep. Yeah. I, I think this card is cool. I think this card is super cool. Like I said, I love the, um, God, what was the name of the stupid trope again? I always forget oh, the name. Oh, um Ha the, the opposite evil counterpart opposite. yeah the evil counterpart trope so like this again that fulfills this you have a staff of domination and staff of completion they're just kind of mirror images of each other it's kind of cool i, I love that theming and yep. um yeah this is it's a cool card surgical skull bomb we now have the blue skull bomb the special ability is two and a blue sacrifice it return a creature from its to its owner's hand draw a card activate only as a sorcery this is easily one of the better ones though I mean, I think sure. the tempo swing is really, really good. Like, bounce yep. their big guy, draw a card. Again, should they be instants? Probably. What are you going to do? Sorge of Forge and Frontier. Uh, I get unreasonably excited every time there's a new sword set. I, I, I can't wait for the, the cycle to be completed of all 10. I think we have like two left, maybe. I know we have a blue black that hasn't been done. I think maybe that's it. I don't actually. I didn't know there was a sword in this set, and it's actually really cool. I like it. Yeah. So the worst sword ever? Definitely not. Definitely not. No a way. Quick creature gets plus two, plus two. Has pro green and pro red. So pro protects from burn. So green creatures is actually usually good because there's a you know they swarm the board. They uh you can get by them without having them block. Red is good because it's a removal color. Whenever equipped creature deals combat damage to a player, exile the top two cards of your library. You may play those cards this turn, and you can play an additional land. So, I mean, it's kind of like draw two and play an extra land. Like this is this card's great. I don't care I what you this say. Is this really card good. is a, this card is card advantage. This card is great. Yeah. Like, let me. What's the um, one of the sort of hearth and home is exile one 
is, is blink a card and search your library for a basic land. That that seems worse than this. Uh, sword of, what was the other one? The white blue one. I don't know the swords. Truth and justice. Uh, whenever a creature deals combat damage to a player, put a one, one counter on a creature and then proliferate. That seems worse too. Like this seems better than both of those. Yeah. I think this card is, is pretty good. Yep. Tablet of completion, two mana, put an oil counter on it, but just tap it to put an oil counter on it. Tap it, add a colorless mana, activate only if it has two or more oil counters. So you can't do anything with it until, okay, you play on two, put an oil counter, turn three, oil counter, turn four, you can finally tap it for one colorless mana. One and a tap, draw a card, activate only if it has five or more oil counters on it. That's so terrible. turn two, oil counter, three oil counter, four oil counter, five oil counter. Turn six, you will have five oil counters on it. And you can finally draw one card. No, you can't because turn six, you're putting the fifth. Turn seven, you get to draw one card. And then you get yeah, to, then you bad. get to, I mean, you get to do it after that too, but Jesus, God, if you're not adding oil counters in other ways, like, it, come on, come on. This is bad. Zenith Chronicler, two mana for a three one. Whenever a player casts their first multicolor spell each turn, each other player draws a card. This I seems this card. really sweet. I love this card. It's just a two. It's a three, one for two. So you got a decent, it's a, it's a fine creature to just throw down. It's any color, any deck can play this. And if it's a strong multicolor format, like you're going to, awesome. this is like Esper Sentinel. You're just drawing a lot of cards off this. Yep. This is awesome. I like this card a lot. This feels fantastic in mono color decks. Yep. Like every, every, like, so if they maelstrom pulse, if they abrupt decay, if they putrefy, if they vindicate, like, this card's sweet, dude. Yep. I like this card a lot. It's going to draw a lot of cards. And that's the last card. That and is And this goes in my mono black Correct. sideboard. Yeah, that's true. You like you have no reason not to play it. Your opponents are never going to draw off of you. Uh, yeah, this card's cool. What do you think? What do you think in Phyrexia all will be one, Robert? It's super strong. I just want to know if Toxic exists. Um that's kind of what I'm thinking. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I think the set seems really sweet. I'm looking forward to to drafting with it. I'm wondering if Mono Black is a, is a deck in standard. Um, yeah. I can't wait to see Atraxa see some play. Like, Atraxa reminds me of Niv-Mizzet Reborn, right? It's a, it's a big, splashy, high-color flyer that draws you a bunch of cards. It does. Yeah. So it we'll does, see. and I can't wait to see what a battle is. The Oilers are happy. <laughs> the Oilers. Yeah, I'm also curious to see what battle is. I assume that's going to be in March of the Machines. Who knows? Yep. Okay, sounds good. Thank you guys for watching. Really appreciate it. Hope you guys enjoyed uh, our set review. Or, or I hope you enjoyed our takes on these cards. Hope you enjoyed seeing Rob again. It's been a while. Um, let me know what you guys think. What what some of your card? What some of your favorite cards are? What some of your least favorite cards are? Definitely let me know uh, what you think of our takes, whether Rob is right, whether I'm right, whether Rob is a doofus, whatever you guys have, whatever hot takes you guys have, let us know. Uh, I, would, I always read the comments and I would love to hear your thoughts. Um, thanks so much for watching, guys. Really appreciate it. And we'll see you next time. Thanks, guys.